Ladies and gentlemen, we're live. It's May 31st, 2016. Here's John Bound reporting. Welcome to the BS Club, hosted by the United Kingdom's New World Order-backed propaganda machine, The Guardian. Apparently, The Guardian didn't have any problem rolling out the following baseless drivel to its readers slash YouTube viewers. Of course, commenting on the U.S. presidential election whilst ignoring the massive problems in your own country is a sketchy undertaking to begin with. But when your publication is run by an elitist New World Order lackey like Dame Liz Forgan, the Dame being her high Masonic title, allowing Forgan to rub elbows with royalty, media oligarchs, and the Lord Rothschild, you do as expected. Here is what the Telegraph had to say about Dame Liz in 2013 before she became the chair of Scott Trust Limited, the British company that owns the Guardian Media Group. The Telegraph writes, why not spend 8,000 pounds on a leaving do, a party held when leaving a job? That's what Dame Liz and her cast are entitled to. That's what the little people are there to pay for. There could be no clearer demonstration of the contempt that Dame Liz, who exudes the haughty sense of self-worth and entitlement that typifies the arts establishment, has for the rest of us, that she chose a drinks party funded by the taxpayer to attack the government for cutting the arts budget contempt and a jaw-dropping lack of self-awareness so without further ado here is the guardian stephen thrasher looking forward to the day when america's dying white majority is overthrown and a political revolution led by people of color ends the white supremacist system currently represented by donald trump's presidential campaign when we had a clear symbol that the country is literally becoming more black why shouldn't we have expected this successor to be the meanest, whitest, most vile bigot possible? And when protesters demanded that Black Lives Matter, why shouldn't we have anticipated the rise of a candidate who encourages violence against peaceful demonstrators? A President Trump would fit right into American history. I'm waiting for the year 2043, when this white supremacist nation becomes mostly non-white. That's when true political revolution might be possible. Thrasher, you work for the so-called dying white majority, completely ignoring that Europe and now the United States are quietly being invaded by Sharia law zealots hell-bent on throwing people of Thrasher's persuasion off of rooftops. Not to be outdone in the threat-laced propaganda lecturing is Guardian columnist Jonathan Friedland. The world is watching. Then the world was inspired. Now we're scared. He won't rule out dropping a nuclear bomb on Europe. Islamophobia would be a matter of state policy. If you're Mexican, you'll know that the American president thinks you're basically a criminal or a rapist. There'll be a surge of what people will call anti-Americanism. People will mock the nation as dumb, vulgar, and aggressive. It'll be like it was in the George W. Bush years, only much, much worse. Friedland, your smug elitist arrogance and weak threats are just as bad as your flaccid declaration of anti-Americanism. Your sycophantic jabbering makes me wonder when you're due back in the city of London for your umpteenth microchipping. And here's yet another Guardian columnist, Gary Young, to lecture us on our democracy in crisis. Claiming Americans are blaming the refugees solely for the soft invasion of Europe and the United States. An invasion engineered by the very globalists signing Young's paychecks. His ascent is part of a rise in right-wing populism throughout the Western world. Most Western nations have their own Trump. A racist, xenophobic, Islamophobic demagogue appealing to a mix of nationalist nostalgia, patriotic myth, class grievance and economic insecurity. Now, liberal commentators describe them as a threat to democracy, but it would be more accurate to understand them as the product of democracy already in crisis. The overall direction of The Guardian is going to be decided by the people who run the trust. And it will also include uh, many powerful people who are very plugged into the uh, international finance community. Finance community? Yes. Anytime Guardian columnists Stephen Thrasher, Jonathan Friedland, Gary Young, and Dame Forgan, for that matter, want to have a debate over their claims, myself and a few other info warriors would be happy to educate you on the glaring reality staring you squarely in the face. John Bound for Infowars.com. That's right, the ultra elite are doing this. These men are front men of them. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Hope you had a good Memorial Day weekend.
It is good to be back. Well, if you go up to Infowars.com, it becomes very, very clear exactly what is unfolding with the headlines there. But another place to go to get a clear image of the big push is DrudgeReport.com. The major social websites of the world owned by the globalists say stop the hate. Tech giants vow to tackle bad speech within 24 hours. Words directed against anyone over issues of race, color, religion will be shut down. National descent or national or ethnic origins will be banned. Unless you're the London Guardian, Facebook, the New York Times, and others coming out saying white people are inherently evil and inherently bad and that there's a new cultural revolution against them. This is an attempt to sell racism to the third world and to old world countries, flood what's left of the West with those people, and assign racial identity to collectivism, socialism, and authoritarianism. Then you've conquered the planet. So this is a force feed operation, just looking at the demographics, to build, if you live in Africa or Latin America or Asia or the Middle East or Eastern Europe, that the fall of the West is how you get ahead. When the social engineers on record are doing everything they can to keep those countries in squalor and in total social control as well, with UN vaccine medical forces out there openly injecting people with every bioweapon ever heard of. It is simply amazing. So that is just some of what we're going to be breaking down here today, ladies and gentlemen. It is incredible. And it's because of the cultural ignorance of the average Westerner. We have a TV culture. We have a vapid, centimeter deep ocean of mindless boobs, on average, who have no conception of how the world even works. And then meanwhile, you've got third world countries being given culture by the multinational combines that control their governments. And that culture is an absolute hatred and vitriol against the West and against anyone with lack of melanin in their skin. This is colonialism reformed by Christians, reformed by the West, selling renaissance worldwide, trying to turn the planet around into a new era of prosperity. We become the most wealthy and powerful because we have the most freedom. Then the corrupt systems come take us over and turn us into an engine to take over the planet. They then flip that back inwardly, take our guilt that the West has, exacerbate it, and then tell us politically we must be slaves and accept the terms of surrender or we're going to be called racist. And then when we do surrender... The demonization, the race baiting, the cultural warfare, the class warfare only triples on a yearly basis. Only gets worse. So again, the West was first to recognize true human barbarism on average and try to reverse it and try to curtail it and try to actually create wealth and prosperity for all. Comparatively. That's a historical fact. It's incontrovertible. Now, because of our Christian ethos, we love to beat ourselves with cultural whips and engage in all these different forms of penance. And we want to pay cultural indulgences to the government, to the media, to the culture to prove ourselves worthy. It's the new religion. They've replaced repressive forms of state-run Christianity that the Renaissance was all about stopping and promoting true Christian ideals. And they've just returned us to a new form of tyranny under a new religious basis that is political correctness. And that's what it is. It's a religion. Merged with the whole green religion that isn't about saving the earth, but about demonizing humanity itself. And so here it is. It's, it's official. I, I told you it was coming. Matt Drudge told you it was coming. We saw the head of the Federal Elections Commission come out. We saw 40% of the FCC board vote last year. 
it failed but narrowly, to come out and restrict the First Amendment heavily. And to give you an internet ID, basically, where if you get three strikes like YouTube, you aren't suspended off YouTube, you are suspended off of the internet, and you won't be able to work or have jobs or do anything. But meanwhile, they're going to expunge the records of felons who go through cultural governmental retraining to be leftist street operatives, and so they will now have armies of felons working for them, but you won't be able to have a job. And the TSA, as they said 14 years ago in a congressional meeting on C-SPAN, I've been telling you since it happened, I played clips when it happened. They said then the TSA will decide what job you have or if you can have a job with a national ID card. But that won't be enforced on the illegals. I mean, this is so massive. This is so over the top. This is truly our journey into bondage becoming almost complete. So here's Bloomberg. The headline should be tech giants working with multinationals prepare a giant offensive against free speech worldwide as globalism goes into high gear. And as the world financial collapse goes into its next phase. Elites accelerate massive censorship ahead of crackdowns on freedoms worldwide. That should be the headline. They're already arresting people in Germany and Sweden and France who mildly criticize the open borders. But now it's just calmly reported, tech giants vow, it's no big deal. Tech giants vow to tackle online hate speech within 24 hours. U.S. Internet giants Facebook, Inc., Twitter, Inc., Google, and Microsoft Corps pledged to tackle online hate speech in less than 24 hours as part of a joint commitment with the European Union to combat the use of social media by terrorists. Oh, we've got to take everyone's speech because of the terrorist, because of the bad little, because of the bad little terrorist, the bad little terrorists are going to get us. And because they're going to get us with their bombs, because the government brought them in five million of our little loving friends have been brought in and 80% according to Interpol are military age men and I got stacks of news of them raping and robbing and killing and highways shut down and total bedlam and ferries shut down and just men running around with knives foaming at the mouth and the police running and cowering in fear. I mean, this is what Europe is. This has been done by design by the socialists and they're going to bring it completely down and then like they're doing all over the UK, they're going to put Muslims in charge as the police chiefs with socialists under them, and they're going to persecute, and they're going to arrest, and they're going to take over. And the average Western male is going to roll over on his back and get in a field position like a dog when it's scared and uh, start urinating on themselves. And I'm not kidding. This is what we do. This is what we've been taught to do, and we're dead because of it. But it's all so liberal and trendy U.S. Internet giants, Facebook Inc., Twitter Inc., Google, and Microsoft Corp. pledged to tackle online hate speech in less than 24 hours as part of a joint commitment with the European Union, with the government, to combat the use of social media by terrorists. And, of course, if you criticize the open borders, they arrest you in Germany and France and other places and let the Muslims run around and do whatever they want. So, see, they bring them in and then use them to take everybody else's freedoms. Beyond national laws that criminalize hate speech, there is a need to ensure such activity by Internet users is expeditiously reviewed by online intermediaries and social media platforms under receipt of a valid notification in the appropriate time frame, the companies and the European Commission said in a joint statement today. And, of course, what's going to be done with all of this is it's all beta tested first in China, now in Europe, now here. And it's already begun. By the way, groveling didn't do too well for him. Normally those that sell out are the ones that have their political heads lopped off first. Sirius XM announces suspension of Glenn Beck over Brad Thor interview comments where he came out and basically said somebody needs to kill Trump for the second time. Now, let me explain something. They're just using that. I'm not defending what Beck said as an excuse to get rid of him. They already got rid of over 300 libertarian hosts, despite the fact that we got them top signups and 
There was another division that years ago put me on and was love what my show was doing. Great sponsorship, great, you name it. One of the only profitable areas of Sirius XM was that whole libertarian group of channels, two of them. And they, they had us on twice a day. It was so popular. And point blank, Goldman Sachs subsidiary bought it up. Clear Channel got pushed out. I don't work with Clear Channel, but they, they were, it was a division of some patriots at Clear Channel that put me on like 10 years ago. And I was on for about seven years. And they told me the inside baseball of what happened. We were removed a couple of years ago. And they said, it's coming across the board. And then see Beck, who's out there supporting us getting taken off the air and things and saying we're dangerous. See, it's happening to you now. No, until, I mean, they're a quote, private company. They can do what they want. But until, you know, he actually got in trouble or got indicted or something, I think, uh, I think this shouldn't have happened. But, but, but regardless, it's only being done now because the climate they think is safe. When they start moving against everybody, it means they're just doing it. And what did Matt Drudge warn us about last year? I'm going to play that clip when we come back. He said these are Internet ghettos, which are gulags, basically, step one. And he said they're coming. I was told by a Supreme Court justice in private. And, I, and folks, I've been told. Now, a lot of folks say, well, let's just go along with this and they'll leave us alone. No, that's how they win. You've got to exercise free speech now or lose it. And that means support the local AM and FM affiliates we're on. They are the last line of defense. You should cherish those affiliates. You should support them now. This isn't a game. Stay with us. We'll be back. I'm Alex Jones. A larger contingent of people are either selfish and just don't care or dumber than a box of old rusty hammers. And that's why they can get away with things like this. And it's a scary time to be alive. Uh, open censorship is being announced all over the world. Persecution of Christians is being intensified. World government is openly being declared. The internet kill switch has been put in place in every major Western country. It's been announced. Cell phone kill switches. Backdoor switches where your phone suddenly nationwide can't videotape or can't record digitally. This is quite an open conspiracy. The smart boxes are in all the cars, made in the last 15 years or so to start taxing us by the mile. The smart appliances are in. They admit they're tracking us, controlling our homes, uh, taxing us, regulating us. It's an, it's an organized crime revolution against civilization by the technocrats who openly have met and openly met with world governments and are openly coordinating with the communist Chinese, the EU, and the U.S. government to go into the next phase, and that is cashless society, bail-ins where they grab money out of your bank account, where every action you get charged for, where any type of grassroots economy is outlawed. This is hardcore, and they're doing it. And they hope to just do it and bring it out in the open and just normalize it like it's no big deal with headlines like this. Tech giants vow to tackle online hate speech within 24 hours. This is all in the TPP. They say to stop terrorists, but they just say to stop that, you know, we can't have people out there criticizing Muslims or anything, because that's what makes them attack. See, you've got to get rid of your speech, and you've got to accept Islam, and it says words, quote, directed against anyone over issues of race, color, or religion. So if you say this London Guardian reporter that is a part African, part Anglo, I guess, gay man, there I'm using the proper word, gay, or I'll get kicked off the Internet. Again, how, we're, how it starts with gay. Sounds reasonable. Now it's everything else. Now I don't say mother and father. And he says, soon we'll get rid of the evil white people and everything will be fine. And we'll just skip down the road happily. That is the most racist, out-of-control statement. But you sit there and say, this guy's racist. Oh, I'm sorry, he's black. He's protected. You're taken off the Internet. Because you, these are protected groups, but they're not really protected. They're just being used. So let's go out to break with this uh, warning from last year with Matt Drudge here in studio. To come. You thought Obamacare was shocking. You thought some of these other decisions were shocking. Wait until these copyright laws work their way up and the Supreme Court 
decides you cannot have a website with news headlines linking across the board, then that will end for me. Fine, I've had a hell of a run. It's 20 years next year or 20 years about now. Hell of a run. I couldn't, I couldn't have gone any further. farther. I feel completely I have gone as far out of the galaxy as I can on this. I still want to stay out here. But I've gone pretty damn far for what one individual can do in this culture. But I'm talking about the future. So I don't know why they've been successful in pushing everybody into these little ghettos of these Facebooks and these tweets and uh, these Instagrams, these Instas. This is ghetto. This is ghetto. This is corporate. They're taking your, they're taking your energy. They're taking your energy and you're getting nothing in return. Nothing. They're dumbing the language down. Twitter's designed to reduce the language directly out of 1984. It's Ingsoc. Right. Ultimately, it's boring and the kids are always off to something new, except for the something new is owned by the same freaking company or financed by the same banking system. So I'm here to say, and this is the reason why I came to see you, Alex, is you are one of the very few who are operating under this, this, under this theory to be an independent American in a, as, in a big way. If your calling's media, if your calling is media, fine. If your calling is sports, whatever it is, but you've got to be the greatest you can be now, now. And we're going to come back and play where he warned about the Supreme Court justice coming to him and saying next year. We're on the march. They're coming after us. The empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. In the last 60 years, we have tried to educate as many people as we can, not just here, but across the world. And now we've got a fighting chance to defeat the World Government Project. Because the World Government Project is only the means to the end. The end game is planetary eugenics. Planetary forced population reduction. And many people say, good, there's too many folks. I don't like standing in line you know, to get my Starbucks coffee. You have Starbucks and complex civilization and choices because of large human masses. That's why you go to the cities. But when you're in the cities, it creates the illusion of overcrowding. And the more prosperous a city there is, the more overcrowded and dirty it is because there's more people and more opportunity and more energy. But you go up in an airplane and you figure out that 90% of the land is not being used or more in places like North America. Now, there are some areas in the South Pacific where fathers are living off government welfare and having up to 20 children. The children then basically become miscreant. They get filled full of leftist globalist ideology worldwide, and they get transshipped into the West. They have no culture, and they then adopt... CIA-produced gangster culture weaponized in 1986 in a government project partially declassified. Yes, inner-city black gangster culture didn't exist in the 60s and 70s. It was completely manufactured, weaponized, put into media, and now has been exported with a devastating effect. White Russians, Asiatic Chinese, it doesn't matter what group it is, Arabs. Uh, you go to Brazil, it's hip-hop music, gangster culture, thugs about being scummy and dishonorable and, and, and just being horrible. That was weaponized to bring down culture. Now you see the attacks on the father, the attacks on the mother. You see everything that's been beta tested in the inner city communities being used worldwide. First tested in the laboratory, then deployed. Just like, you don't just think they shot black people up with syphilis, do you? They were just so sloppy about it in Tuskegee, they got caught. In a 47-year project, they kept secret with more than, what was the number of people that they know they did it to? Tens of thousands? And again, I talk about Tuskegee all the time because that's one little thing everybody knows about, even with the dumbed-down population. You know, this video from Infowars.com yesterday, Americans have no idea what Memorial Day is. I'm going to play that. See, this is why we're in so much trouble. This video is up on DrudgeReport.com. It's a Paul Joseph Watson article. Mexican parents train three-year-old girl to say we have to kill Donald Trump. Graphic photos. Migrants fleeing Islamic State risk bringing deadly flesh-eating disease to Europe, already hitting hundreds of thousands. But they're not tested. They're not tested. Just like 
TB, 20 plus percent of the migrants, they're not invaders, they're not illegals, they're not jihadists, they're migrants. Of course, you can't migrate to Saudi Arabia, you can't migrate to Mexico, you can't migrate to North Korea, you can't migrate to China, you can't migrate to Japan, you can't migrate anywhere but Europe and the United States, Canada, Australia. And they don't even test for drug-resistant, and that's a nice name, for drug-immune TB that will eat your lungs. But now we have a new flesh-eating love, I have trouble even pronouncing, it's leishmaniasis. Ah, sandfly disease. <laughs> Can we pull up the headline out of uh, France about the go? Civil emergency declared on French highways because the migrants, there's just videos, hundreds and hundreds of them every week. There's so many, we can't even watch them just just besieging and robbing and dragging families out of their vehicles. Just, <laughs> and then we can have some weird, lisping London Guardian guy that can hardly talk. Go, how dare you be Islamophobic? We will conquer you, white people. Uh, liberal. While the Guardian's run by a big mega bank trust, openly run by the IMF and World Bank that's annihilating Europe. They talk about how we're going to defeat the white elites. <laughs> what you want to do is blow up anything left of the Renaissance. Because you set up a free market system in years, it can reverse everything you've done. It's like a machine. Let's say that the earth was radioactive. No matter how radioactive you set this machine up, it could terraform in a matter of years and, 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 and remove the radiation. Let's use a cheesy... 1980 Star Blazer. Uh, uh, can you guys cue up the, the original Star Blazers uh, intro? I'd only seen the first season when I was a kid. I'd run home and try to watch it. And, and you've got these gamelons firing these big planet bombs that are radioactive at the Earth. And the humans have moved you know, under the crust. And they're trying to go to this other planet, Iskandar, to get this machine that they can bring it back. It'll reverse the radiation. They are literally hunting down the republics right now, hunting down free market and all this choice and all this culture and everything. And they turned the engine on its head and turned it into just anti-family, anti-freedom, anti-saving, anti-free market, anti-technology, anti-medicine. They got rid of the Hippocratic Oath. They have death panels. They have, they have death panels for the veterans. And Bill Gates gets up on TV and goes... If we kill one old lady, we can give you 10 jobs. And then people are like, oh, oh. And Gruber gets up on TV and goes, good thing. The public's a bunch of dumb idiots. <laughs> I mean, there's, listen, what you're hearing from me is the truth, okay? They've put the internet kill switches in place. They've done it all. They've got it all set for the next phase of world government. A global collapse. And they roll in planetary rule as a solution to the problems they created. Just like I told you, they would push civil emergency Europe-wide, ban free speech there, and then here, when the jihad attacks happen, and now they've openly announced it. And they're going to do it here. That's why they're bringing in the sleeper cells. So, look, look, video. Americans have no idea what Moral Day is. Video. Mexican parents train three-year-old girl to say, we have to kill Donald Trump. Graphic photos, migrants fleeing Islamic State risk bringing deadly flesh-eating disease to Europe. It's already there. 18 people are sexually assaulted at German concert with victims surrounded by mobs of migrant men and groping and copycat attacks in those in Cologne. Because from those Muslim countries th these guys are coming from, if a woman is unattended, you're allowed to basically rape her. And then when you rape her, she gets executed. Now that's in places like Pakistan and... Uh, Places like Saudi Arabia, executed. Ex look it up, executed. You're, you're gay, executed. And then you've got weird gay guys on TV going, whites, it's over. Your Islamophobia is over, okay? Oh, oh ISIS throw me off a cliff, thank you. Oh, I mean, you know, oh, so far, oh. I mean, this is, this, is, this is what we've come down to, ladies and gentlemen. Students call for prisoners and prisons to be banned in U.S. group headed by unions. Anti-Semitic new president says all criminals should be freed. So that's how it starts. Put everybody in prison, then release the violent offenders, make them the enforcers. They're not going to release anybody. They're going to release the violent offenders and make them the honchos. In fact, I've got articles in Germany and France. They're hiring illegal aliens to be the new police. 
Trump slams embarrassed loser Crystal over third party threat because Trump doesn't want a bunch of world wars. That's just some of why this is all happening. But meanwhile, tech giants vow to tackle online hate speech. EU links up with Twitter tech firms to combat hate speech, AP. Operation Tulip takes prosecutors' offices for Google tax raid. Yeah, they're going after Google because they haven't been as, as good a boys as Facebook and Twitter. Here's another article uh, from Heat Street. Predatory peacekeepers, UN soldiers are committing widespread child rape. They always have and they always will. That's why people join that force. That is a force of looting and evil. They don't want you unless you're corrupt and evil because then you would blow the whistle on the looting the UN engages in. Oh, nearly 46 million people are trapped in modern-day slavery, Bloomberg reports, but of course the UN's helping run all that worldwide. But every time you see the most gorgeous supermodel out on the street or at the mall, she's wearing a World Wildlife Fund, a UNICEF, or a UN shirt. Because supermodels are told, you don't get the contract, sweetheart, unless you wear UN clothing. And when you get asked what you support, you support the end of the family, the end of the patriarchy, and the United Nations and ch for children. Patriarchy rules the world, so check your male white privilege. And all over the country, our reporters are there, and weirdo white people run up and go, you're not allowed to talk. You're white. You're a white male. And they're white. You look at them, they're all crazy. <laughs> and they don't have jobs, or they do at state jobs. They're real dumb, but they're on power trips. Their eyes are aglow. It's their time to take over. It's their time. Yes, 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 yes. See, they're going to be the new bosses. Even though there isn't some white male patriarchy, unless you're in the mega corporations that are setting this up to have us all kill each other. Little powerless, power hungry control freaks that can't even have a husband because they henpeck and harass men so bad, men would rather be alone than with women now. And that's a generalization. But that's what's going on as they teach everyone scientifically how to collapse, how to fall apart, how to be nobodies. And we told you they're coming. Words, this is quoting from the AP, directed against anyone over issues of race, color, religion. Facebook a year ago said if, if you disagree with someone, just disagreeing could hurt their feelings, we're going to ban you. And that's what they do. You send out the most mild information even, and they're banning that, and they're restricting that. And people say, well, they're not doing it to InfoWars. They've done it a bunch. But we make a big deal about it, put them on notice. We're going to sue them. They back off because they don't want to warn you. You know, I've used this story a lot. It's an allegory, a parable, a parallel, because it, it happened. Many times I'd be in the deer stand when I was like, I started shooting deer when I was about seven. You know, and then taking them back and gutting them, just chopping them up, preparing them. The average training would be, ugh, gross. Animal cruelty, you know, buy the meat and eat it, but that's okay. But actually going out and being a real human, you know, I want to just kill something. No, it's about turning on those genes, those genetics, flipping ritual switches. Killing your first deer and gutting it is the same thing as kissing your first girl or planting your first tomatoes. Something happens when you, when you get in the soil and plant. Or the first time you go on a night hike. Or the first time you get in a real fight. All of a sudden, you just, all these things switch on, and it's like, whoa, it's next level. But see, they don't ever want you going next level. The truth is, life is like a video game, folks. You go up next level, next level, next level, next level, next level, developing yourself. They don't want you ever to have that. They want arrested development. And so many times, we'd be sitting there, and a little buck would come out. First, some dough would come out, females. My dad say, well, you want one of those? You know, that, that's that's better for cooking the stew. Or, or I guess you want to get a rack to show off. He goes, well, then I bet a little buck comes out here in a minute. But let's wait and see because there'll be a bigger buck probably in there. And if, and, if, and if that little buck doesn't get shot, he's going to come out and run him off. And a couple times that didn't happen, but a lot of the time it would. My dad say, see, I heard him snorting back there like 200 yards away. My dad was like, just relax your eyes. You're going to see everything moving. Don't look for the animals. Just open your eyes. This is in the woods with little clearings. And I opened my eyes up, and I could suddenly see all these different animals. A badger, a weasel, crows, an, you know, an eagle fly by. It's like going to hunter mode. My dad would sit there and, like, basically relax. He was, almost hypnotized me. That's just ancient male passing that down, all being broken. I haven't even given my son all, the, all that training, you know, and, and how, to, how, to, how to see different signs and the wind and how to hunt and how to fish and how to fight and everything else. And so all of a sudden, out come the doe. They're sitting there eating the oats, plant the oats, eating little green oats in the winter. 
All of a sudden, out comes that little buck. Don't take him out yet. Wait till the big one comes. And then sure enough, five minutes later, he comes out, runs him off. Boom, shoot that big buck right there, right there in the heart. And that's what they're doing. They're just holding back with everybody going, don't take Jones out yet. We want to get them all. Wait, wait, wait till we got them all in the news. They don't want to raise alarms. They don't want to take Drudge down yet. They'll take a, they're going to wait till the economy drops, ISIS hits, there's terrorists taking action. Oh, we got to shut the web off because the terrorists are using it to communicate. They're using cell phones. We just got hit by 200 cells in one day. And the martial law comes in. They put the radical jihadis down, but say, you don't have free speech anymore. You cause them to do it. And we're arresting other radicals that were anti-Islamic. And the sheep public will line up and say, good, arrest them. Shut their speech down. That's what we want. I have war game the enemy. But I also have contacts in the military as high up as Delta Force, you name it who concur with my analysis that this is exactly what's going on. Because my analysis is the analysis. It's not like I came up with it and that's reality now. Anyone that studies this and knows the ball game can see it for themselves without hearing Alex Jones. I'm just on target. Now, I'm going to stop right there. And just let everybody know that we have one of the biggest specials we've ever engaged in. And funding our operation is critical. But more importantly, this is stuff you need. Uh, I said that when May ended, I would end the 20% the, the off on Survival Shield, Nason Iodine X2, the good halogen. To introduce it to you, even though it's about to sell out, I just went ahead and said, you know what, we're going to go 20% another day. But, 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 I mean, it's ending today. I may send it in tomorrow. But we are also having 30% off Super Male Vitality. 30% off liver shield, 30% off vitamin mineral fusion, 20% off survival shield X2, and 20% off all InfoWars Patriot apparel. And this is for Memorial Day we just had. If you're a veteran, give yourself the gift of good health with vitamin mineral fusion, super male vitality, X2, liver shield, you name it. But regardless, if you've got friends and family that are vets, so many times they have been toxified by what they went through in war or the vaccines or the rest of it. And, and these are people we really should help out. So give a vet some vitamin mineral fusion today, give a vet some X2 today, super male vitality today, because so many times folks get given these products and then they become customers of InfoWars and listeners because of it, and that's symbiotic and, and helps continue the broadcast. So pay it forward. Give the gift of X2 or super male, super female vitality. By the way, we sell a super male for months. It's back in. I'm discounting it for the listeners and for the veterans, but also for folks who've never tried it before to give yourselves an opportunity. Now, on orders of $50 or more, we go further. Free shipping on top of that. And then we go further. You sign up for auto ship on things like the nutraceuticals or anything else for that matter. But it makes sense with coffee and you know, things you reuse like, like X2 or Knockout or our uh, oregano oil or our joint, joint bone, bone formulas. All of it. Uh, the, the, the lung cleanse. There's so many different products there at InfoWarsLife.com. You get 10% off when you sign up for auto ship. Free shipping on orders of $50 or more, 30% off vitamin mineral fusion, 30% off super male vitality, super female vitality, 30% off the liver shield, and so many other specials at InfoWarsLife.com. Take advantage today and know the small profit we make on each item is so much discounted. Funds the operation, 888-253-3139 is the toll-free number to call and order as well, 888 888- 253-3139. We're sending reporters to Europe, to the migrant camps, and to Bilderberg for 10 days. We're going to have reporters all over the country currently. we got Joe Biggs going out to California. Uh, we've got uh, so much coming up, the RNC, the DNC, and it's your support of the info war that makes it all possible. What the globalists can't counter is real culture. They're destroying everybody's culture and replacing it with this globalist, politically correct, homogenized garbage. They plan to use radical Islam as a bizarre authoritarian enforcer. And I used to hear this 10 years ago from right-wingers, and I would just roll my eyes and go, you people are crazy. Yes, they're doing a clash of civilizations. Yes, they're destabilizing the Middle East. Yes, that's wrong to do. A lot of Muslims and Arabs and people send me constant emails going, you used to not be anti-Islam. Why are you bashing us? I'm explaining this to you again. I was against destabilizing your countries. I'm against Saudi Arabia installing all these corrupt groups. I'm against Wahhabism. I was against attacking Iraq because they didn't carry out 9-11. And now the whole place has been destabilized by design and they're putting radicals in charge and bringing them in. And these are real people 
real Sunni Wahhabists that kill the non-radical Muslims around them and are taking over Islam, whether it was bad before or good before or whatever. It's being radicalized. It's dangerous. Now the jihadi threat is real, and the Western governments at the top plan to let them attack. And they're going to take our liberties and freedoms in the process. I mean, I had Tim Kennedy, who's involved in the highest level national security stuff. And he hasn't told me all that. I know that separately. And he was concurring, saying, yes, that's their plan. I had him in the studio last week. But I don't need to talk to people in Delta Force to know all that. I can sit here and tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, the globalists mean business. They didn't put... $50 billion of internet kill switch in, that's conservative, the last 15 years to play games. Okay, it's here. And they need us to just not be aware of it, like TPP and all this other crap. Let's play Matt Drudge again, talking about the Supreme Court justice warning him a year ago, face-to-face, -face, they're coming in 2016 for the free speech. And look, all over the world, it's happening because they have this on timetables. Because next year, folks, I'm sure of it now, the real global meltdown is going to happen, I believe. It's already here in most areas of the world, but still in isolated pockets. The U.S. is doing okay. The bottom is falling out. I don't want that to happen. Some people say, well, be more optimistic. Maybe it won't. Mathematically, it's impossible. It's like an 89-year-old guy that's had 15 heart attacks. He's going to have a new one at some point. The heart's rotten. It's going to blow into 10 pieces. And I'm just here trying to tell folks they're going to use the crisis to try to take all of our freedoms. Here's the clip. I had a Supreme Court justice tell me to my face, it's over for me. I said, Matt, it's over for you. They've got the votes now to enforce copyright law. You're out of there. They're going to make it so headlines you can't even use headlines. To have a Supreme Court justice say that to my face, that it's over. They've got the votes, which means time is limited. You know, I want to take that whole interview, and it was an excellent interview, but, you know, I, I jumped in quite a bit because it was a surprise visit. And so I would have done a better job if I could have been prepared, but it was it was fun to have Drudge pop back in. Uh, and we need to take that and edit it down like 15 minutes and air that, I think, all the time. or have a bunch of intros and outros that we're talking about because he doesn't do interviews, but every five years or so. And But, again, time is compressed. I know Drudge is listening. I think Drudge should probably be heard from a little bit more because he kind of is the symbol of free Internet. Any links to mainstream government documents, alternative grassroots stuff? The point is, it's a different filter of a guy that's a populist and a patriot instead of Mark Zuckerberg, the king of Facebook, and his filter that's telling you Obama's God and free speech is bad and let's get rid of our borders and let's bring jihadis in. And they are coming and saying, this is what they're arguing in the TPP, that we're going to say you can't link to someone's website. Well, how are you supposed to even, uh, or people come to your site to see what you're linking to. It's crazy. They want to end communication, folks. They want a new dark age. Stay with us. Sign up for our free email to counter the censorship. Infowars.com forward slash newsletter. All right. I've always told Roger Stone, who really is the consummate Trump insider, that he can come on anytime he wants when there's breaking news. And uh, he just called us. He's coming on at the bottom of the hour. We're going to get a 30-minute update with Tosh Plumley and Colonel Matt smith Mac, just out of the Marine Corps. Uh, who's been death threatened, physically attacked, you name it, for trying to expose a current shipment. Can't believe I'm saying this just calmly. Oh, put out on Twitter that we know about the next massive shipment from a Marine Corps base uh, of uh, military weapons to Mexico to be sent to ISIS. Oh, we're trying to stop an ISIS shipment. I mean, I know the FBI people want to stop it, but I, I probably, we should probably call the See Something, Say Something Homeland Security line. Is that get me that regional 1-800, I mean, it's a national number, but they have regional numbers that are for your region. And I'm going to put it on air when they join us coming up and just say, I've called FBI before on air. People don't believe I actually get FBI agents on the phone and start talk to them. People are like, that's fake. Alex isn't doing that. No, we, we really do do that. I mean, that's not that bold of a move. I mean, supposedly public servants, I'm trying to stop this stuff. People go, why are you involved? Well, I'm no hero here, but if I see something, I'm supposed to say something, right? Oh, they want you to report the neighbor you saw cleaning a deer in their garage. I see that article every few months because as the suburbs grow out of the countryside, it's just always the same story. There'll be some old veteran outside his trailer on some 40 acres he's had. It's deer season, and he'll be right by the road with you know at a tree with a deer hauled up in it, gutting it, and the Californians have moved in. It's always Californians or 
and they see the guy got the deer and they call the cops and then the cops don't do anything, but then animal cruelty comes. And then they get arrested because it freaks animal cruelty out to see a deer hanging up. And you're like, that didn't happen. Look up for yourself. Police called on man cleaning deer. You see it all the time. And that's just the alienness of the general public. And by alien, I mean alien from normal human activity. My dad's dad had been in construction, oil, uh, you know, drilling, and then been in county government and stuff like that. He was a smart guy, you know, had a college degree in agriculture from A&M and, and, and engineering going from memory. The point is, is that I tell people the stories that he would grab a shotgun and go out and shoot birds for 15 minutes on the back 40, literally. A couple hundred acres out front, but like 40-something acres out back. And shoot a squirrel in the yard and come in and cut them up in a matter of like three minutes. He could skin a squirrel so fast, he'd nail their feet down, just rip the fur off, cook it, chop it up, throw it in a skillet, uh, tear the breast out of the quail or out of the dove, didn't matter what time of year it was, boom, throw it right in there and just put some toast in there. And in an hour, 45 minutes, he'd have a nice lunch cooked and just bam on the table and everybody eat. My grandma was even better cooked. But, I mean, he would just fix, like, tractors and combines with pieces of rubber band and tin cans and weld and, and electricity and just... My dad was still like the clumsy, like a spider, just fixing everything, like a robot or something. Me, I'm like, ooh! And I'm, like, super good at changing tires and fixing stuff compared to the average man today. I mean, I can roof a house and I can do basic plumbing and I can fix some things. People, when they see me do it, they go, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> like your, well, the, you know, the wife's like, because well, well, I'm too busy fighting the New World Order, calling a handyman, but oh, I can do it. But compared to the average person, I've got some skills. But And I talk about this all the time. It's just that we are so domesticated. And then you go and you talk to the average trendy. It isn't about race. It isn't about color. It isn't about religion. You go to San Diego, you go to L.A., you go to downtown Austin, you go to trendy areas, the more trendy. These people literally are walking into walls with their phones. They don't know who they are. They are in deep trances. And they are so stupid, like this video coming up. Americans have no idea what Memorial Day is. A big blitz of, of insanity. Uh, speaking of Mark Dice, another video Watson wrote an article about. Has this poor Mexican three-year-old being taught, you know, that say kill Trump's a good idea by his parents. I am truly overwhelmed right now, news-wise. I've, I've covered a lot of it last hour, but I've probably got 90% I haven't got to, and I need to get to it. Uh, earlier this morning, I was watching like an hour-long press conference with Donald Trump giving a bunch of money to veterans groups. And they, they, they had the reporters just chewing him out, bitching him out, demanding details of this or that or where the money came from. And he's like, I'm having a press conference about giving veterans money. I'm not getting to that. You can look it up later. And they just turn everything into a controversy. And there's another Bill Maher clip where the, he has a hypnotist on to talk about how Donald Trump is hypnotizing people. And basically using neuro-linguistic programming. You know, I love how every wannabe genius out there thinks that everyone is using neuro-linguistic programming. Neuro-linguistic programming, uh, people kept telling me I was doing it. And so I went and read a book about it like five years ago. I watched some videos about it. And it's mainly hype, okay? But people that are talented speakers are naturally going to do things that political scientists and advertising scientists are going to codify into some type of language or nomenclature. But let me tell you what sells stuff is being genuine and being off the cuff and being real. Hillary does engage in neuro-linguistic programming. It's dumbed down, it's mindless, and it targets people that are already in a trance, basically. 
But it's the TV flicker rate, it's the fluoride in the water, it's the culture, it's the sedentary nature that prepares the ground for neuro-linguistic techniques to take hold. And if you want to dumb down neuro-linguistic programming, or the voice, as Frank Herbert would call it, you would play the clip, the famous clip from episode four, Star Wars, How long you have these droids? I don't know, three or four seasons. These aren't the droids you're looking for. You can move along. These aren't the droids we're looking for. You can move along. That's an exaggerated example of that. So when you listen to NPR, that is a project of the Rockefeller and Annenberg project of the Defense Department. And the whole thing is about making you think you're intellectual, controlling the left, and putting them in a sedate, calm, tranced fashion. I have been told by NPR, when I've been on multiple national interviews, later they call back and go, oh, we're not airing your interview. They said your voice was too aggressive and too raspy and too upsetting. Exa too awakening. Too awakening. They didn't use that word. They said just too upsetting. And, and, and they'd ask me, can you just calm down and just slow down? Because with them, it was all about that project is about capturing people. Everything is calm. Everything is good. I don't know why Donald Trump acts like that. I don't know why he doesn't like women. All I do know is... We're going to win. That's Hillary Clinton. And Obama is clearly trained in a, in a cadence and, and trying to, it's fake. It isn't as powerful as taking the gloves off, real deal. Sometimes I'm gibbering 100 miles an hour, sometimes I'm talking slow. It's what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, and your subconscious mind is a thousand times more sophisticated and, and is able to read what's genuine versus what's fake. But these people are sociopaths and psychopaths, and they're so ungenuine, so disingenuous, that you study sociopaths and psychopaths because they're not real. They're like, I've got a little puppy kid get in the car. They're all about smiley and dressing non-threatening. and Oh, hi, I brought you some presents. Oh, hi, we're friends. I've always learned now when a, when a sociopath is around, they do all this, oh, we're friends. But you look, you can tell it's fake, and it's overdone. And they come and they bring you gifts and they do, you know, internet videos with, you know, with Muppets, how they're friendly and how they're nice and how they're here to help because they don't know how to be real. So they're trying to study how to be genuine. And then folks see something genuine and they say, well, that looks like neuro-linguistic programming to me. And that's just because you haven't been around anything genuine. Or you get around the general public who's, huh, you know how to talk? Uh, whatever. I don't care. Nobody hates me. I'm in my own world. Yeah. So much the public is so beaten down, they just want to get in their own little clique with a few people under them so they can be the boss and so they can have the power. Because they don't have the power. The whole world was built so they never had rites of passage, never had rituals, never had ways to, to ascend to feminine power, male power. I mean, you take people and you put them through trials and tribulations and you put them through cultural Rituals that are natural and wholesome. I can take the weakest person today and you, you take them at birth and put them through real ritual. They'll be an incredible person. But you've got to have ritual. You're not going to hear this in any book, folks, by the way. I know this. I've experienced you have to have ritual. You have to have trials of passage to activate the race memories, the race consciousness, and to activate the sixth sense. And by the way, down at UT Psychology Department, that's all they work on is the intuitive and the innate and the sixth sense. They know it. They're obsessed with it. And they're just busy trying to keep everybody else in programmed mob psychology and controlled. They know, they know that people are psychic. They know, they know it, folks. It's all been proven. 
Now, they'll put out con artists on TV, you know, that uh, with a Caribbean accent. They're telling you that, you know, you call in and I will tell you your future. and They'll just tell you some great future. That's all a bunch of hype. And that's taking things that people innately know are there. And then lying about it and claiming that this person has 50 times the innate power that, let's say, a person that's powerfully intuitive would have. Here's what I'm getting at. To the so-called elite, you're going to destroy everybody. You're going to destroy the planet. Where you're going won't work. You're not going to merge with machines and become gods. Get off your crazy power trips. You have really got to transcend this for yourself to transcend. You are not going to dumb everybody down and go to the next level. That is not how the universe works. Just at a mathematical level, mathematical, cultural, algorithm, measurement. Quantified first and put into popular culture by Isaac Asimov in his foundation series. You are not, which was obviously what they were shooting for and what they were planning for even 50 years before. They were just putting into a cosmology there to roll out the public where they have computers hooked into everything that can predict the future off mass movements. They now have that. And so all this other stuff is just a side issue once you, once you fully grasp that. That you cannot dumb the public down to make them manageable and directable with stimuli and say they have no soul and say they have no destiny and say they have no innate free will without it creating a group consciousness shift that will also destroy your consciousness. And that's very simple to understand. You create a interdimensional fourth and fifth dimension plane and program that with a smart grid an extermination dumb grid and you put that into place you are going to create an evil paradigm and that just means it's destructive it doesn't grow it's not healthy it's not good and it's like a black hole it gets worse and worse as you feed more into it, it will demand everything. It will take everything down to absolute zero and will accelerate everything in a pyramidal structure into absolute tyranny. And this is just so simple. And, 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 and the establishment says they understand this, but they don't follow it. Because they want to have their next level of managers who, meanwhile, going along with this project, going, it's sure ugly, it's sure dangerous, it sure looks bad. They go, it's for the greater good. We must come through this great time of testing first. Well, you're not the ones testing humanity playing God. You're delusional. You're not providing stimuli that makes us stronger. You're providing twisted stimuli that makes us adapt to being enslaved and destroyed. Look at the fruits of this tree. It's stinking, it's rotten, it's poisonous, it's ugly. It's bad, it's diseased. And you're planting more of these trees and taking resources to grow this culture of darkness. Because the truth is, only evil, twisted people who fall into complete, absolute evil would want to build something like this. And you've only lied to yourselves about what you're really building and who you are deep inside. And I'm speaking to the next echelon level right below the actual controllers. When you get to the controllers, they know full well what they're doing and are practitioners of dark arts so evil, I don't even want to imagine them. Oh, oh, oh. We'll be back. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Hell is being built on Earth. Yes, humans can dream and build anything. And our elites are very wicked and twisted. And they're building something very ugly and something very scary. Free humanity must rally against it now. Dr. Stone's coming up in the next segment. You know, I, I figure I should open the phones up for him. He's got breaking news he wants to go over. But uh, I'll take a few calls before he leaves with your random questions. I think that's a good wild card. Joker's wild. Uh, Jack's wild to take the show in a different direction.
So we'll take five calls for Roger Stone coming up in the next segment, 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. But quick, focused questions is what we're looking for, please. 800-259-9231. On this Tuesday edition, it feels like a Monday edition. Now, getting into the dumbing down of the public, this is essential that, that there be no culture in the United States or in Europe. Then they bring in folks from the third world, and they take the trashiest nature of nationalism that all countries have, and they say that that's the culture. And Mexico has a, a culture they're trying to force feed on Mexico. Most Mexicans I've met or talked to are more sophisticated than that, and I'm literally are more informed than the average American, just a fact, on average. But there's a large contingent that I guess feel isolated, don't feel part of things, generally in areas totally dominated that are probably 90% Hispanic, like areas of L.A., where a real culture is kicking in of just bring down America, kill Donald Trump, all whites are evil. Uh, it's really terrible. And it's very, very sad. We also see the Hispanic and black community killing each other at even higher rates. So it's tribalism. You see this when the public has been basically dumbed down. And there's a video up on DrudgeReport.com. It's, it's, it's a Paul Joseph Watson article. Mexican parents train three-year-old girl to say, we have to kill Donald Trump. Mother and father encourage toddler to make death threats against presidential candidate. Shock video footage shows Mexican immigrant parents encouraging the three-year-old daughter to repeatedly say we have to kill Donald Trump. And this is just so sad this is going on. Here's a clip of it. You're about to see this poor three-year-old Mexican girl being brainwashed by her parents, her mother, and her father into saying that she should kill Donald Trump. I'm blurring the child's face for her own privacy because I don't want her picture to be plastered all over the internet. The parents, of course, didn't give her that respect, not only encouraging her to say such despicable things, but recording the video and posting it on the internet for the whole world to watch. Have a look. We're gonna kill Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, is that a fact? Why are we gonna kill Donald Trump? That's right. yeah. You can hear the mother say, that's right. So this isn't just some kid just mouthing off and the parents thinking it's cute. They are actively encouraging it. Have a listen once again, and we'll watch some more clips. Why are we going to kill Donald Trump? Because she's bad. That's right. You have to kill him. That's right. Why is he bad? <laughs> That's mean, huh? Yeah. Mean Donald Trump. Yeah. So what are we going to do? <laughs> Again, the mother encouraging and trying to get her to say it a third time. Or is this the fourth time? You're going to kill him. <laughs> they think it's cute. And this is the kind of trash that Donald Trump wants deported from this country. No different than Hamas raising their children to grow up to be suicide bombers, indoctrinating them to want to kill the Jews from the time that they can speak. Now, the Mexican-Americans doing the same thing to their children, encouraging them to want to kill the possible next president of the United States. Now, what goes further than that, that's from Mark Dice, MarkDice.com. Mark doing always a great job. This, this is what's going on, and, and, and this is their plan where this child won't have any future with jobs or future with not being spied on. All of our rights as humans are being taken. You'll never hear our parents go, we should go after the makers of Gardasil that's been connected to deaths and sterilizing women, and Hispanics are being targeted with it all over Latin America in Mexico, our little darling. What are we going to do to Merck? What are we going to do to... To, to former Governor Rick Perry, we should sue him. We should expose him for saying it was the law that little girls had to take this. No, no, no. They're going to actually protect their daughter from a real assault by the globalists that run the media that are pushing the narrative that Donald Trump's the devil. Because they've got Donald Trump's phones tapped, and they know Donald Trump is a nationalist, and they know Donald Trump listens to this show, and they know Donald Trump is snuck up on him. And that's why they're literally freaking out over him for real, Hey, in Austria, they had a nationalist that was going to be elected. He was 10 points ahead in all the polls. He lost. I mean, how do you think Germany and Austria go, we're just going to open our borders up to 5 million people with tuberculosis and flesh-eating bacteria and everything else? It's okay. And they don't seem to think they'll get voted out because the fix is in. And they're arresting people 
that criticize the open borders there. This is globalism. This is the UN. This is the World Bank. This is the EU. This is the global bodies collapsing sovereign states. Not because they care about the third world. They want to keep the third world in poverty. Remember, six years ago, we got the UN plan for carbon tax. Double the taxes on the third world right at. Double the taxes on them. But they sold it like free money to the poor people. Oh, a global tax. It's a, it's a, you think George Soros wants to give you anything? We'll be back. Stay with us. Not a game. World government's been openly announced. Donald Trump is saying no to globalism, no to bad deals. Sell out American sovereignty, our jobs, and our culture. And the fight is on. He's with us till the end of the hour. We're going to take five lucky callers to get to ask questions of Stone. Coming up here in about 15 minutes. But first, he's got big breaking news. I'm usually the one asking him to come on. But anytime he's got breaking news, boom, he can get right on the show. Uh, he wants to talk about money. The key is money in this campaign, super PACs, and then a sneak peek on who could the VP be for Trump. By the way, he's going to be here in studio with us Friday. Roger Stone coming into Austin, Texas to war game on a bunch of fronts. We're going to him in just a moment. Please don't forget, we're ending these specials today. They will end today, and that's it. Because I'm going to run out of Survival Shield X2 at 20% off. The Good Halogen, absolutely got to get that. 30% off Super Male Vitality, Super Female Vitality, 30% off Liver Shield, 30% off Vitamin Mineral Fusion. We're extending the Memorial Day sale. 20% off all InfoWars apparel. 10% off on top of that when you sign up for auto ship and free shipping on all orders of $50 or more at InfoWars store. That's one word, InfoWarsStore.com or you can go to InfoWarsLife.com. That takes you directly to the subpage with the Brain Force, the other nootropics, uh, the lung cleanse, and so many other game-changing products. And here's what's great about this. We don't get taxpayer money like NPR or MSNBC. They've gotten billions. We actually sell high-quality products and have sponsors, and then it's free association. You can decide whether to fund us or not. We don't put a gun to your head and then use the taxpayer money against you and your family. We're defending your Second Amendment. We're defending our sovereignty. We're standing up against the radical jihadis being brought in en masse. We are promoting real religious freedom. We're against the jihadists throwing gays off roofs overseas and they want to come over here and have Sharia law. Because we're tyranny phobic. We don't like the New World Order tyranny or the radical Islamic tyranny. So it's so important to support the broadcast and to know they've announced massive censorship in Europe with the big Facebook, Twitter, Google, Apple, all together saying we're not going to let you criticize anybody. If you're conservative libertarian, we're going to shut you down. Germany already arrests you. And now Zuckerberg wants to do that here and has been restricting Trump and Drudge and InfoWars and everybody else. So it's on. But they're trying to restrict us because they've been quietly doing it forever. It hasn't worked. We are taking the planet back. Hispanics, we have our reporters all over the country, are, are like half the people. I mean, I sit there and watch raw video of like 30 minutes people going into a Trump rally. Half of them are Hispanic. With Hispanics with Mexican flags spitting at them, screaming at them. I want to do a special report on that, by the way, because we have all the footage. We've showed it. And the, the Hispanic Americans are just laughing at them. And they're just laughing at them and because, you know, they're dressed nice. They want to have a prosperous country. They care about this nation. They, they, they want that dream. That's why a lot of them left Mexico, and they're being spit on by gangbangers with Mexican flags with zit-faced white kids hopping around spitting. Thank God we're not with these people, folks. And, and the good news is the hoax that Trump's anti-woman or anti-Hispanic, whatever, is collapsing. They're panicking. So now more than ever, spread the word about this broadcast, the interviews we do. Sign up for the free email newsletter and exclusive videos we send at Infowars.com forward slash newsletter. Because with the censorship intensifying, even if they shut off Infowars with their internet kill switches and stuff, and that's a possibility. During some Islamic Tet offensive and crisis, they say they'll do it. Just like in Europe, they shut off the internet, they shut off the Patriots communication, claiming it's to stop radical Islam they brought in. So sign up at Infowars.com forward slash newsletter, because even with an internet kill switch, we can still get to you via email, and it's key that we be able to communicate. All right. Now, without further ado, let's go to Roger Stone in his uh, war room in Florida. Inside the battle for the republic outside the Trump campaign, but one of his top advisors, always giving us key intel on so many fronts. Thank you for joining us, sir. Alex, it's great to be here, uh, and it's an exciting time to be an American. It is. Okay, you've got the floor, my friend. What is front and center? I know you sent us this article, uh, the big casino owner, Adelson Age, uh, in talks to set up pro-Trump super PAC. 
Yeah, I, I think it's very important to recognize that Hillary Clinton, according to the most recent Federal Election Commission reports, has raised about $85,000 in super PAC money and has as much as 45.8 on hand today. Uh, and there's more where that came from. So uh, Trump, of course, would be a foolish to unilaterally disarm. Uh, but first, he must raise upwards of a billion dollars through the Republican Party Victory Fund. Now, uh, the very first fundraiser was very successful, netted about $6 million uh, at the home of Tom Barrick, a uh, businessman who runs a real estate opportunity fund, who's a close personal friend of Donald's. Uh, and uh, that is, that's good, but if you go do the math, the party apparatus is going to have to raise that much every day on average. And of course, Donald Trump himself cannot do that many events, so he has to campaign. Uh, there, there is a, going to be a very interesting um, uh, uh, development. We have to watch fundraising carefully because it is crucial. Uh, now, Corey Lewandowski uh, is in charge, as I understand it, of the uh, newly announced fundraising operation. It is absolutely clear that like the Clinton campaign, the Trump campaign is going to need to be augmented with super PACs. We have talked uh, on this uh, program about the problems with Great America PAC, the financial irregularities, the longtime record of Ed Rollins, the chairman as an anti-Trump antagonist, and, and now his ties to Teneo strategy, which is the Clintons. I believe that Good old Ed is a quizzling, and this is a sabotage operation. Uh, there is a group called the uh, Committee for American Sovereignty, a pro-Trump PAC uh, with an august committee. Uh, I have sent them $1,000 personally. Uh, I know this fellow, Doug Watts, who runs it. He is a competent uh, practitioner of political communications, and he is a real-life Reagan Republican. Uh, so I've sent him $1,000 uh, from myself. Uh, but the news today really is that the uh, the billionaire Sheldon Adelson, who has pledged, uh, according to Politico, $100 million to the Trump campaign, uh, will probably fund neither of these entities and is in talks with a new PAC. What this story doesn't tell you is that among those political professionals that they're in discussion with is Carl Rove. Yes, Carl Rove is back in the house. Rove has been pitching Adelson to let him control the $100 million that is to help Trump. Now, I don't need to tell you that Carl Rove has done nothing but belittle, attack, uh, and underestimate Donald Trump. By the way, he lives right here in Austin. And I'm just going to leave it at that, that I happen to talk to a um, political person who's on record, works with Rove some. And he said, look, I'm, uh, he's saying, you got to get behind Trump. This is last week. And he just laughed and said, no way. So I know last week he was saying he's going to get Trump. So well, uh, that's some key intel right, for you. Well, here's the other key point, and that is Reince Priebus uh, and his friends at the Republican National Committee would also like to send $30 million worth of data analytical work to the data vault owned by Carl Rove and others. So Carl uh, is now trying to profiteer. It is not just that he is a longtime antagonist and critic of Trump. Well, he famously has gobbled up most of the Tea Party money. He's a, he's a hated creature. And achieved nothing. The point is, he lost. we lost the White House under Carl. We lost both houses of the Congress. He then in 2012 and the previous cycle had unlimited money from mega wealthy donors. He's a loser. He cannot help Donald Trump. He doesn't know how. He didn't see the Trump revolution coming. He doesn't understand the new dynamics. Uh, so uh, if, if, if Karl Roves ends up getting wealthy off the candidacy of Donald Trump through the good graces of Sheldon Adelson or otherwise, that would be a that would be a tragic, tragic thing. Well, sure. The mainstream media is saying, "Look, Bush Senior. and and Jeb and and former President Bush W. Uh, and Mitt Romney and others and, and and the Keating Five 
John McCain. They're not going to be at the convention. Oh, it's so terrible. Thank God. Thank God these horrible, warmongering demons that hate Trump because he doesn't want to have war with Russia and war with China Thank God, and, and doesn't want to let radical Muslims in. Thank God if they were endorsing him, I would have some serious problems with Trump. Well, uh, but again, that doesn't stop their quizzling, their running dog lackey from trying to cash in on a candidacy that he sure, but isn't that key intel that just last week he was running his mouth against Trump to to, to high powered Republicans here in town, uh, and that uh, when they were pressuring him, and so that just shows where he's at. He just wants to take the Trump money. He is very definitely uh, uh, in the mix here, talking to Adelson, talking to some around Trump. We have to remember he is not a friend. He is uh, he is the architect of many of the failed globalist policies that are destroying. So this. you and I and our audience are basically Paul Revere's uh, trying to help Trump not be infiltrated because uh, of the fact that there are these political operatives out there. Uh, look, uh, Donald Trump's a very smart guy, smart guy, and he knows that Karl Rove is not his friend. But he's out campaigning every day. He's counting on his his campaign apparatus to, uh, to do everything legal uh, to uh, ensure that uh, they raise as much money as they can. Super PAC world is a different place, and there are hucksters in the market like Rollins uh, and his uh, silent partner, Jesse Benton, the convicted felon who destroyed Ron Paul's campaign and then Rand Paul's campaign. Uh, but I wouldn't put a dollar there. If you really want to help Trump, uh, then I would say either give directly to the Trump campaign, give to the victory fund of the Republican National Committee, or look at these other super PACs and determine which one has low overhead, competent people who know what they're doing. Sure, because Hillary's going to be getting the big Goldman Sachs money and everything. It's up to the grassroots to be able to do this uh, because Trump is such a grassroots organization. It's taken you know no money so far. Now it's starting to because it's like saying you're going to go to space without oxygen. He's got to have the oxygen tanks, folks. It's got to happen if people are serious about winning. But Benedict Lewandowski, I mean, Corey Lewandowski, or is it Arnold Lewandowski? All I know is, what's his name again? I mean, I, I don't have a, a dog in the fight. I think, you're, I think you're referring to Louis Korandowski. And anyway, uh, Louis yeah. uh, said again on Fox this weekend that he uh, was in charge of vetting uh, the vice presidential candidates. Um, nobody active in the campaign uh, tells me that that is the case. Uh, I do know A.B. Culverhouse, very able lawyer, worked for Ronald Reagan, uh, who has uh, been brought in to work on this process. But let me just put, let me get to the bottom line. My confidence is in Trump. I know that the, that the establishment Republicans are pushing uh, 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 Corker and others may be pushing Newt Gingrich. And yeah, let's talk, we're uh, talking VP now. Let's get into that. Exactly. I'm putting my entire confidence in Trump. He knows, above all, that whoever he selects must be somebody who is at one with him on the major issues facing the country. Uh, and therefore, the chance of him taking someone out of the establishment, someone who would make Trump uh, uh, a, uh, an, an assassination target for some, some who would uh, or others who would seek to enter his administration in order to co-opt it. Trump is way too smart for that. He will pick somebody who is a nationalist and entirely loyal to the president. So I'm not worried about some of the names I hear. My friends uh, in the Liberty Movement and in the Republican Party email me every day. They say, oh, God, sure. Well, let not, me throw out a couple please here. Not please what about, not this one. Please not that one. What about a Senator Sessions? I like Jeff Sessions. I've known Jeff Sessions uh, since he was in the Alabama Young Republicans and I was young, running for Young Republican National Chairman. He is a fine uh, individual. He's an excellent lawyer. He was a great judge. He would be a great vice president. And he was the first man uh, in the Congress to endorse Donald Trump. And I hope that Sessions is on the list. There are other fine people. I like Shelley uh, Moore Capito, the U.S. Senator from, New from uh, West Virginia. Tough, experienced, not a globalist. Uh, there are, I like General Mike Flynn, uh, as an outside-the-box possibility. All I know is that only Donald Trump knows what the real short list is, that, that those in the Liberty Yes, field, Roger, we know you don't know the short list. <laughs> no, 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 look, I don't think, I think the short list is probably, knowing Trump as I do, I think the short list is probably changing 
I think he is holding this very much to himself. I think he floats certain names to others. Well, I've watched the body language and everything else, and I can tell you right now, just watching television when he's around Sessions, the way Trump acts, he really likes Sessions. And I think yeah, Sessions I think that, is a good choice. I think they, I think they have, they have a, a, a great chemistry. But, but uh, look, I, I, again, Trump is going to uh, make this decision. He's going to make it uh, with some fanfare and with some buildup because he realizes better than anyone else that this is a, a great news story and get, it's going to generate great attention. Uh, and I suspect people are going to drop on and off the list. I doubt that he's made a final decision. I don't think he knows who he wants today. I'm sure he's leaning one way or another. Sure. Uh, but anytime well, you Well, bottom see line, I want to go to a few phone calls. You're going to be in here with us for an hour and a half live in studio Friday. Really gracious for you to come out of town. Uh, but before we go any further, just, just briefly, because folks are listening, what is the best pack that, that is actually promoting Trump and the Constitution and, and where the money actually gets there uh, for folks in your view? Uh, I have uh, given a contribution to the Committee for American Sovereignty. Uh, and uh, you can find them online. Uh, they have put together a list of, uh, of retired military officers, including uh, General McInerney, uh, uh, a, a former executive with the Trump Organization, Nick Ribas, longtime uh, president of uh, the Trump Hotels and Casino Resorts, uh, former Congressman William Hendon, a number of state uh, legislators. It, it is a very august. Uh, Phyllis Schlafly is on the committee, for example. Uh, there it is. Uh, th these are fine folks. I am not working for them. I understand. You're, you're simply uh, trying to get Trump in, into office but, under your First I, Amendment. But I know that they will not steal the money, and I know they will use the money either to register new Trump voters or to fend off the attacks of Hillary Clinton. And what's the website for that? It is uh, the uh, Committee for American Sovereignty dot com, I believe. Yeah, man, we'll check it and put it on screen. It's on screen there, folks. There, there you is. go, because there's so many groups out there that you've said were a fraud, and then people get indicted. I mean, you really are giving us accurate information here. We're going to skip this network break because this is so important. I want to be able to take calls before we've got to leave us. But just watching today, the story's up on Infowars.com. Trump whips press over charitable donations to vets. And that's a good headline, but I'd say blast. I mean, he just blast them. Uh, Don Salazar turned out this article quickly. I will say that the press should be ashamed of themselves. I, I couldn't pull myself away from this press conference. I'm going to play some clips coming up at the bottom of the hour. I've got some guests popping in. But, man, just trying to even get money to vets they attack him. They just can't let him look like he's doing anything good. It's so sick uh, when these are the people that say nothing about the don't treat list that we know our military has been under for six years with Obama. Obama is killing the vets. These people cover up for it, cover up for Hillary and her Brian Williams stories about sniper fire, but then they go after Donald Trump. I mean, what a sick, filthy group of people. Well, Hillary Clinton said very recently that the problems in our VA hospital system are not widespread. What planet is this woman living on? In, in Arizona alone, where the ranking Republican on the Veteran Affairs Committee, Senator John McCain, lives over 600 people died waiting for medical care in the VA. Joe Biggs has been blown up in armored vehicles repeatedly, shrapnel shot, you name it. He coughs up blood all over the place. Uh, he's got all these medical issues. He can't, they, he's can't. he been there 30-something times. And they just each time say, come back, come back, come back, till he gave up. Now, one of my cousins, two terms uh, in Vietnam, a uh, Purple Heart winner, um, is told that he makes too much out of his meager retirement, and therefore he's not eligible for treatment. Yeah, that's the new thing. That's the new thing. It, it, it's just it's just insane. So it's me. It's means testings for means testing for veterans, but not for welfare recipients. I was reading uh, in, in the Hill newspaper last week. The average illegal gets seventeen thousand plus dollars in welfare. Uh, the the quote migrants get even more than an actual Social Security recipient that's paid into it as a citizen. Wh who is running this country? Well, I think that's all going to change under a President Trump. Let's go to your questions, because I, I love this part of the... Absolutely. We're going to go to phone calls right now. We're going to go to... In fact, you did that great Reddit thing that was so popular. We're going to do more of those. I'm going to do one later this week. Um, let's go ahead and... Will you guys pull that screen down? I can't read there. Sorry. I can't see the callers there on screen. Again, we're talking to Roger Stone uh, right now. I'm Alex Jones. Infowars.com is my website. Stonezone.com uh, is his website. Let's go ahead and take a call uh, from Rob in Canada. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. How are you? Good. Hey, Roger. Question for you. What's, uh, 
What are your thoughts on these continual rumors, you know, by Bill Crystal and the neocons to bring some third party candidate in to, you know, just kind of. Well, they say they're doing it. Votes. They say they're preparing it. Yeah. Well, let, let, I think it's a bit of a misnomer. First of all, it's recognized that there's probably no third party nomination available to a new candidate. Can't get on the ballot. The Libertarians nominated their ticket uh, this weekend, my friend Governor Gary Johnson uh, and uh, Governor Bill Weld. Uh, and uh, the Greens are not going to nominate somebody copacetic to, uh, to Bill Crystal. So what Bill Crystal's really talking about is an independent third candidacy. The requirements in most states are actually even more rigorous in terms of valid signatures. Sure. So, I mean, we know it's a fraud. So, so what's the point of it? I, I don't really understand. Look, I, I like Bill Crystal. We disagree on everything. He is a dastardly neocon, but he's charming company. Uh, he voted, you know, he was a supporter of Hubert Humphrey. He's not my political cup of tea, but he's a fine fellow. This is folly. I don't know what this is about. Sure. Well, you're being a gentleman. Let's get back to Johnson. He's been a guest probably 20 times here. A good governor. I like him overall. You, I think you didn't you run his campaign once. I, I worked very closely with him. Okay. Okay. So, but I mean, let's let's be years. honest. He's he's saying something about Trump that isn't true. He's acting nasty and and he's trying to spoil this thing. Get the libertarians to hand this to Hillary. So let's take the gloves off on Mr. Johnson. You know the truth of the matter is that if Bill Weld and Gary Johnson run the right campaign for them. Uh, which is to be uh, fiscally uh, conservative and conservative on defense, but to be socially liberal on uh, marijuana uh, and civil liberties, they will, just as Johnson did four years ago, take pretty evenly from Hillary Clinton and uh, and Good. Donald Trump. So don't buy this whole Sure, but he's kind of running on a Trump bashing platform. Well, I, I have seen Gary's comments. I don't think that that's productive, but I also can't presume to tell him how sure, to sure. run yeah, He's going to destroy I'm, himself with the real libertarian movement if he does that. I think you should watch it. Let's take another call. Al in New Jersey, you're on the air. Go ahead with Roger Stone. Hey, Alex and Roger, you guys are doing a great job. Listen, a very quick suggestion. Why don't we bring up with Lord Mockton and Donald Trump a discussion on a global warming so we could smack Bernie's face and Hillary's because they'd be trying to slide yeah, out. Yeah, Trump should hammer turning our power plants on and how they're sabotaging America and how China opens three a week, we, we shut down three a week. I think he's hit that some, but I think that's a key for him to hammer. Roger? I don't necessarily disagree, but in all honesty, climate change is one of those issues the left tries to use to disqualify Trump. Uh, and based on uh, the, the polling that I have seen, it is not one of the driving issues of this election. Our economy is a driving issue. Immigration. Borders, guns. Right. Immigration is a driving issue. Uh, our foreign policy is a driving issue. Uh, and our trade policy and its connection to jobs is a driving issue. Uh, I think Trump can hold his own on the uh, climate change issue. But frankly, I want to look for areas where we have commonality with Bernie right now. Rather than no, where I get we it. We want to get Bernie folks once he drops out. To we, need a third, we need a third of those votes for Donald Trump to win. All right. I, I want to take a few more calls here. You've got to go in, in, in a moment. But but we've seen him as he takes the gloves off and, and really you know goes with your book and your research on the raping and the rest of it and the deaths of Vince Foster. That's when he starts surging in polls. So hopefully he, he's a smart guy. I know he is. He's getting the advice from you and others to get even more hardcore. Well, look, he's a brawler. He's a fighter. Uh, nobody's putting words in his mouth. He has a broad cross-section of advisors in the sense that he uh, consults many, many friends, and he's always asking for people's opinions. But at the end of the day, I hate to steal a phrase from uh, George W. Bush, but Trump is the decider. Uh, and what you see is what you get. The fact that he's not a confection, that he's not a phony, that he's not politically correct. Sure, that that's what folks not. see. Real quick, Robert in Michigan, you're on the air with Roger Stone. Uh, hey, Alex. Hey, Mr. Stone, how you doing? Good, good. Go that's ahead, Robert. Good. That's good. Uh, real quick, um, this is a question, Mr. Stone, regarding Mr. Trump's um, agenda. Um, as far as, in my opinion, I think, you know, in order for him to win, you know, he can take away some of the African-American votes from Hillary because 90% of African-Americans, for some reason, you know, are wholehearted to the Democratic Party, regardless how egregious they are. But if he can get like 20 percent out of that base, you know, I, I think he'll have a smooth victory. To uh, I agree. Shouldn't he go all in for the African-American vote? 
Absolutely. Uh, there's no question. First of all, the Clintons have done nothing for the African-American community. The reason so many young African-American men are incarcerated today for possession of small amounts of drugs is because of the policies of Bill Clinton. And then, and, and then she decries it acting like he didn't do it. Right. And then, <laughs> But she called black people super predators and she said they needed to be brought to heel. Bill Clinton told Ted Kennedy of Barack Obama a few years ago, this boy would be getting us coffee. Uh, this this is the dog the whistle hell? politics of the Clintons who ride with the hounds when it suits them. Uh, they are no friends of the. Now, let's just say it. The Clintons are what I'm ashamed of in the South. But, I mean, Bill Clinton, she's not a Southerner, but Bill Clinton's a nasty Dixie Mafia Klansman type. And of course, her mentor is Robert Byrd, the Grand Dragon. These are filthy people. Roger, I know you got to go. We'll come back for two minutes and 70 seconds. When we come back in the third hour, just finish up a few things with Roger Stone. That's a great point, Robert. I'm going to give you a comeback. So stay there. I want to have you pop back in with Stone on the other side. 70 seconds out. All right, a few more minutes with Roger Stone. Then we've got a Marine Corps colonel coming on along with Tosh Plumley to expose ongoing Fast and Furious guns through Mexico to ISIS and Al-Qaeda. We know the shipment. We're trying to stop it. I'm going to probably call Homeland Security on air. In fact, guys, pull up that see something, say something number for me because we're going to try to stop this uh, arrogance uh, that's going on right now. Robert in Michigan, I want you to have a comeback bringing up that great point that uh, black unemployment is basically right at doubled under Obama. And a lot of black commentators I know, you know, it's just say, look, I'm not even a conservative, but this, we literally funding, attention, and he doesn't even go speak in these communities. And it's almost like, well, the poorer we make you, the more you'll be under our control. That's the view I see. And for everything I've heard about Donald Trump, uh, this guy really gets off on making everybody wealthy and really, really likes everybody, regardless of what color they are. Uh, so I want you to be able to come back in a moment, but uh, Roger, can you, uh, can you speak from your experience 40 years? Well, uh, look, first of all, it's anecdotal. I must say the number of African-Americans at Trump rallies just seems to be disproportionately large. And, and as I travel, because I have spoken out uh, for Trump and on behalf of Trump and given a lot of surrogate speeches for Trump, it's amazing the number of people who come up to me in airports, on the street, uh, in stores, uh, in restaurants, and they high five me. The irony is that the vast majority of them are African-American just anecdotally. So I've seen it firsthand. People like the fact that Trump would re-energize the economy. These people want their piece of the American pie. They 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 don't want to be employees. They want to be Look, employers. even Louis Farrakhan's liking him. I mean, I'm not It's just getting people want prosperity. They want to they, they want to hear we're great. Well, I like his bow ties, but I'm not crazy about his politics. Well, he, he just likes hearing, you know, bring money back to the communities and get the country going. Uh, Robert, Michigan, I, I, I come back to that. Yeah. Um, well, my point is, like, I know this. Most of, most of the free world, you know, a lot of people know this, but the mainstream, they do, a, well, they do a poor job, in my opinion, but, you know, somewhat to the effect of, uh, like, everything you mentioned about how bad the Clintons are. You know, I watched the Clinton Chronicles. You know, I sat there and watched the whole movie. Uh, and it's very factual, very, you know, I presented the facts and I understood it and all the other cases that you make, Mr. Stone. But I guess my question is, how do you get that message to the mainstream? It's a great question. Thank you, Robert. Got to jump. Great, great question. That, that's what a campaign is about. That's why you go out and support super PACs that oppose Hillary Clinton. Because if the mainstream media say CNN doesn't want to interview you, that means you have to buy a 30 or seconds, 60 second spot in between their program breaks. That's advertising. This is the great thing about Citizens United. It used to be just the Clintons and the Bushes had political money. Now any citizen can go out there and be effective. Speech is money. Let me ask you this, because I know you'll straight shoot us. You don't rah-rah. You don't cheerlead to put a good face on things. In fact, I think you give us the worst case. A lot of times behind the scenes, you tell me, this is how the state's really going to go when the media's saying the opposite. And you've been right. I mean, you're super accurate. Not kissing your butt, no brag, just fact. What's his real numbers looking at all the polls? I mean, it's true he's getting ahead of Hillary, right? But I mean, what do we face? The money issue? I mean, how is Trump really doing right now? First of all, the idea that any Republican is running essentially even or in a dead heat or slightly behind or slightly ahead of Hillary Clinton at this point is extraordinary. You usually don't see this kind of closeness and gap closing until much later in the campaign. Uh, that means that there is without any question enough votes here to elect Donald Trump. Now, Trump is about to undergo the most virulent, nasty campaign of vilification in American political history. At the same time, they're going to try to discredit and smear the brave women who are gonna stand up and tell people what the real Bill Clinton is like, a rapist. 
uh, and they're going to attack him on a dozen other things, calling him a bigot, a racist, a misogynist, a lunatic, a wild man. It's the Barry Goldwater treatment. I don't think it will work. People are, are on to the two-party duopoly and their smear tactics. But this is, the fact that Trump is this competitive in states like Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, uh, is extraordinary. Florida. This is going to be very, very. Is he going to win California? It's not. A, it's not impossible. But in all honesty, in my model for 270, he doesn't need to all win. All right. California. All right. Roger Stone, StoneZone.com. Thank you so much. What's the name of the pack again? The good one. The Committee for American Sovereignty. I think there will be other fine packs and in. Uh, sure, in but we don't want to support packs. Carl Rove running off the cookie jar. Thank you, Roger. See you here in Studio Friday. Take care. The bottom of the hour, we've got recently retired Marine Corps Colonel Matt Smith Mac joining us for an update, and Robert Tosh Plumley, famous CIA whistleblower. And then at the bottom of the hour, I'm going to get into all the other news and world events I haven't covered. Then Paul Watson always does a powerful fourth hour. He'll be hosting from London, England. Matt Smith Mac uh, was on the main board uh, at Guantanamo. He's commanded major bases. I'm not going to go over his giant bio, but he's, he's got an amazing career. He's been threatened, physically attacked for the information he's exposing here. They're trying to talk to Congress. Congress won't give them the time of day. Senators, House members, uh, this is so dangerous, what you're about to hear. And of course, we've had uh, Brian Terry's brother on. This is about Benghazi. This isn't just about Fast and Furious. And this is about Brian Terry being killed so they could cover up the fact that guns weren't just being shipped from gun shops. That was to blame the overall operation on gun owners, but from military bases. There's about to be another shipment right now as we speak. It's about to happen or is happening. And do we call Homeland Security on air so this is on record? Do we call Congress? What do we do? What do we do? When the whistleblowers have come out, it's happened, and, and no one gets in trouble. We're reaching a level where we have all the witnesses of the stand-down order at Benghazi. We knew about that four years ago, and it happened, but now it's confirmed. We know there were troops 25 minutes away, loaded up on an aircraft, told to stand down. Now they can ship the guns directly to ISIS and Al-Qaeda, and we can have people out blowing the whistle that are being physically attacked and death-threatened, what comes next? This is a new level. Uh, in fact, guys, I was asking, did, did you get me the Homeland Security phone number? We bring it into me? Thank you. Because I intend, I guess today, to, I've done it before, call Homeland Security on air and make a public report about this. But this is a public report on almost 200 stations around the country and millions listening and watching on the Internet right now and millions more uh, when, you know, the videos of this get posted. Hey, Alex, this is Nico. I'm popping in live right now to let you know that we've been searching for a number and we've been unable to locate one. Their, their website's been redesigned since Jakari did that stunt and they're pointing everybody to call 911 now. That's right, because those are the local threat fusion centers. They have the whole see something, say something deal. And they still have some 800 numbers to the FBI. They still, you know what, I, I want to call the FBI Austin. And it actually says San Antonio, but it redirects to, to, to Austin. And then I guess, you know what, that's a good idea. I guess I could call the Austin police chief. I've got his number. But that'll be referred to the feds. But, I mean, this is Colonel Matt smith -Mack, and this is Tosh Plumley. Um, we're going to go to him right now. I'm not going to go over his whole bio, but, again, uh, the Marine Corps colonel has, I mean, let me just give you some of his bio here, Joint Strike Fighter Joint Program. Office, USMC Requirements Officer, Tribunal Member and Chief of Staff, Naval Base Guantanamo Bay. Chief of Staff, uh, Naval ba uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. This is in the middle of his bio. Uh, the Office for Administrative Review and the Detention of Enemy Combatants. Uh, reviewing combatant status over 500 detainees and working closely with former Secretary of the Navy, FBI, CIA, DIA, and that endeavored. Deputy Branch Head, Aviation Manpower Headquarters, Marine Corps, Currently, a consultant and entrepreneur. I mean, that's just a small part of his bio, but he's trying to tell Congress and trying to tell the FBI, and then all he gets is physically attacked from behind and death threats. I'm just hammering that here now that we're just doing an update because it's the end of the month and the shipment's about to happen and it's classified, so it's illegal. It's all the Hillary stuff. They're trying to tell Congress and they won't, America. 
So, Matt, uh, Colonel Smith, Mac, thank you for coming on. Tosh Plumley's here as well. You guys just pop in and take control uh, here of the broadcast at the bottom of the hour. Just get the info out because this is this is short and sweet. Not focusing in on the story. Folks know about it. Our audience does, but how to get reportage on the shipment that's about to happen or has happened? Uh, hey, Mr. Jones, it's uh, it's uh, Matt Smith, Mac. Yeah, and I wanted to say also, uh, Kent Terry um, said he'll be listening today. I let him know. Fantastic. About I want to the, thank uh, him for his courage. So, well. So, yes, so bottom line, uh, tell us about the we, shipment. What's about to happen? What do we do? Bottom line, sir, there's uh, you know, a shipment went. Uh, we let Congress know, uh, House Oversight, let them know. Uh, nothing, nothing. They did not act on that information. So the shipment went, went into Mexico, got on a train, went southeast to a port, and then and God knows where after that. And this was a few, a few days ago? Because you said it was at the end of the month. This was a few days ago. This would have been, this would have been the 23rd okay. of this month. Yes, sir. Last time you were on, another, you said it was imminent. You weren't exactly sure when. So now it's happened. Weeks. Sure, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go. Yes, sir. Another shipment about in about three weeks or so, three to four weeks. Again, letting Congress know, letting them know there's a an, an individual willing and able to help them. Uh, Kent Terry knows this person. William Lajeunesse knows this person. All they need to do is engage with this person, and I think they'll they'll. It, it, it's it's that one area that the federal government, the executive branch, utilized to execute fast and furious in these kind of operations. But for some reason, the legislative branch seems reticent to want to access this domain that is we have a unique insight and opportunity to get into. So this would blow fast and furious, Hillary, the whole system, the kingdom come politically, and Congress won't act on it. Well, it's sad, sadly, it appears that way. Wow, well, this right, is just such a huge deal. And, and I knew that was coming up at the end of the month, so I wanted to get you on. Uh, so, so this has now happened. And it's just ongoing. Have you received any other threats, Colonel? No, no, uh, no other threats. I mean, you know, the the kind of the the, the friendly friendly warnings from people who do who do cons are concerned, saying, "Hey, you know, back off. You don't want to be found face down in a gutter somewhere." But um, but uh, this is too important. You know, as I said before, in your first time on your show, uh, we're we're citizens, not not subjects. And uh, as a Marine, you know, Brian Terry deserves my full effort and faith to make sure closures come to him and his family. Well, sure. What, what, what if they're shipping five-year-old kids next, which, you know, the U.N. does? Are we supposed to just let them ship little kidnapped kids out? I mean, how long do we sit here and watch crime committed? Let's go to Tosh Plumley, famous uh, whistleblower. Tosh, you've been helping break this wide open because folks knew you had the courage to talk about it. Uh, what's the bottom line for listeners and viewers out there that what? Congress stood down and let this happen? Okay, let me let me back up here and see if I can get uh, get a little bit of background of how Matt and I got together. Four years ago on your program, we mentioned exactly what we're covering now. We talked about guns going across the border to Mexico, which was all up and over and above Fast and Furious. That Fast and Furious was a cutout for an international gun running operation that was being filtered through Mexico to the Middle East and to, into Gaddafi's bunkers. That's been documented before the fact. We also documented on your program and other programs and on my Facebook page that monies were going back to the Hillary Clinton from foreign donations of people that was receiving weapons from our arsenals that was approved by uh, the direct commercial sales program, Blue Lantern Report. This was all documented. Today, I don't know, a Huffington Post briefly put out an article uh, that confirmed information that went back four and a half years ago. Uh, which was covered on your program and also on John B. Wells' program on Coast to Coast on November the 2nd, 2013. These were documented, uh, vetted information. That information was also, at that point in time, turned over to the U.S. Senate, the Congress, Trey Gowdy, and Grassley in the form of 11 Benghazi questions that made direct references back to the gun running operation, which was legal at that point in time, but it was going across Mexico to the Mexican army. The Mexican army was filtering that some of the percentage of those weapons off and sending those weapons to the drug cartel, which was proven when Joaquin Guzman was arrested and some of those weapons ended up in his safe house. Now, what got the current situation between Matt and I together, his investigation, Terry, Brian Terry's investigation, and my investigation, all three dovetailed right together over a period of five years. Brian Terry was killed on, on uh, uh, December in 2010. 
Eight months later, we were sitting in Las Cruces, New Mexico, with five sectors of the Border Patrol Intelligence Unit, and we were telling them exactly what we are talking about today. The Senate, the Congress, the President of the United States, and the U.S. State Department did not. They said the information was from non-creditable sources, multiple sources, my myself included. I went on Facebook page mainly for protect myself and my colleagues from information before the fact by publishing in detail exactly what our investigation had run over from a task force that was working out of Fort Bliss, Texas, into the uh, Mexican Marinos and also uh, with the Mexican Army. We had infiltrated the Mexican Army, found out that they had informants that was working directly with the cartel, and all this information was passed on to the U.S. Senate and the Congress. Absolutely nothing was done. It was turned into political, a political that we, our crew and our investigators and our people and our military people had an ax to grind against this administration and they turned it into a political vendetta and made us look like total fools. As time progressed, the information became vetted and vetted and vetted. Now to bring Matt, Matt in and Matt can jump in anytime he wants, Matt got information about the information was, that I had was still ongoing. I knew it was ongoing from the military task force working out of Fort Bliss, Texas, which was known as Task Force 7, military operation, boots on the ground inside Mexico. Sure, I know. I've had family in Task Force 6 and 7. They just say the stuff going on is unbelievable, but won't tell me. I just know they've resigned out of those because they say it's so corrupt. Uh, what can you tell us, Colonel, about what's happening in these task forces and where all this is going now? You know, so this just dovetailing what Tosh said, I, I know uh, the military uh, had been involved uh, going back to 2005. You know, I was I was tasked to uh, go to MCS Yuma, uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, to look for a military nexus uh, into at that time wide receiver and then fast and furious. Reported back on some of the things that I had found, not so much in Fort Campbell, but certainly in Yuma. And again, that was about 05 time frame when, if you look at the the genesis of Fast and Furious. Um, the, the, the seeds of it under wide receiver, it began to blossom in Yuma and then kind of blossom out there you know, from Yuma, going, kind of going you know, to the, to the uh, eastern part of Arizona. Um, and again, uh, you know, not, not but August of 2014, I was um, uh, talked to by a, a person identifying himself as a, a Colonel Taylor, Air Force uh, OSI, telling me that the DOD was aware of um, uh, their installation and equipment uh, nexus between them and Fast and Furious, and, and now we know, you know, some of these weapons, Mr. Jones, are again not just not just um, hand, uh, handguns and rifles. These are laser-guided munitions. These are Stinger missiles. These are things that came out of you know the Hawthorne Depot up in Hawthorne, Hawthorne Nevada, and worked their way down. I mean, this and is, let's uh, be clear. Then now they're claiming in mainstream news, oh, ISIS built its own. Stinger missiles, and then they admit in the article, no, they actually got some, we don't know from where, to, to confuse people. So they're even putting cover stories in. Undoubtedly, ISIS is already blowing up and bringing down airliners, uh, you know, one every few yeah, months. Sir. How long until they start using those Stinger missiles? And what is the political class thinking from both of you, Tosh Plumley and yeah, Colonel? Insert something right here. The Stinger missiles that you made reference to was recorded. 400 of them was missing from our arsenals and some of them were taken out of the bunkers in Libya before Gaddafi was killed. We reported the missing, those 400 Stinger missiles missing. Senator John McCone, um, McCain, not McCone, that's the old CIA director. John McCain said that when pigs fly and the sun rises in the West, right in reference to Tosh Plumley alleging that there were Stinger missiles in ISIS hands. Two weeks later, those Stinger missiles was photographed in the back of brand new pickup trucks. It's not confirmed. So I, I guess the pig, yeah, it was confirmed. I guess the pigs do fly, and I guess the sun does set, uh, rise in the West. Now, I'm not upset with any of these politicians. As far as I'm concerned, they're all damn crooks, working for special interests and tied in with the International Crime Syndicate. I'll say it. I'll say what some of these people will not say. This is an international crime syndicate. It's an international gun running operation. Now, I'm going to back up here. When those weapons went across to Mexico and the Marines, uh, Marinos investigated, confirmed what we had and what we had found in warehouses in Juarez, Mexico, that belonged to the cartel, and I photographed them. And we went in, and there's also a raided ranch 
that uh, they had a very bad day, according to what the Marinos told us, at the iron fence, which has been photographed. I don't rattle, rattle, rattle. I'm not trying to rattle. I'm just trying to give background. When Matt come along and said, hey, they're still going on. I said, absolutely right. We know it's still going on. How do we get Congress and how do we get the Senate to act? All right, who approved it? It came from the U.S. State Department. They approved the applications for those weapons to leave the country and go to the Mexican army. The Mexican army filtrated a percentage of those weapons off to the drug cartels, three of them. Joaquin Guzman's uh, son in law was one of them. Sure. Well, also, El Chapo, who you know, El Chapo had 50 cows that were from the military. So, so this is all going on. Here's the bottom line. Why would the criminal syndicate, why would it be crazy enough to give impads to ISIS and Al-Qaeda? I mean, obviously, they're doing this on purpose. It's still ongoing. It's not an accident from Fast and Furious. What is the end game? What is the master plan? It's simple. It's very simple. You've got a situation where we start the conflict. We escalate the conflict. We furnish weapons to both sides of the conflict. We keep it going, and then we filtrate that money back into various, not only the Clinton campaign or foundation and the Clinton Global Initiative, which only, by the way, only gives 3% of their funding back into contributions, which does a very good thing, very limited as it is. There's also 97% that goes to, edu to uh, administrative costs or whatever and, and tremendous salaries. But anyway, that's another that's another thing. that they Sure, they steal money at every level. They're master criminals. I mean, I get it. So still, uh, the elite haven't done stuff like this before, unless you're talking about the 80s, and they mopped all those up. So and, and let me ask the colonel, why do you think they're doing this? Sir, I think it's, uh, you go back to Rothschild. You know, you want to control an event, you control both sides. And I think we're uh, much, much like when Tosh was... Uh, um, uh, involved when, in Cuba in 57. I mean, you know, the government uh, armed both sides of that, of that conflict. And uh, I, I hope and pray, and I recently emailed House Oversight, I said, I hope and pray that um, uh, ATF agent John Dotson, another true hero, wasn't entirely correct when he said, Matt, the politicians will always only do what's in their political self-interest. So uh, I hope to God this time their self-interest coincides with the right thing. Well, that's why we're doing this. Obviously, you're risking your life. Everybody here is. Let's, let's, not, let's not make bones about it. Because we understand that you can't just arm these radical groups with high-tech, high-impact weapons. And it shows our elite is getting more and more insane uh, before they try to stop this from happening. And they've obviously got some larger plan. And we want Congress and everybody to know when the planes get shot down with these, you're not going to cover it up. And it's going to come out, and you're not going to get away with it. Uh, this is just so out of control. Uh, Colonel smith -Mack? Yes, sir. Any other points you'd like you know, to add? John, yeah, one, one thing, if I could. I, uh, the, 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 the person who, uh, you know, Tosh knows him as well as, as, well as Kent and others. Uh, we, in short, information he had got to House Oversight end of September 2013. And just as a point of, again, before the fact information, the, the House Oversight was told, September, late September, I think September 23rd, 2013, that there were grenades and grenade launchers uh, involved with these weapons that go on south. It wasn't just handguns and, and, um, sure. and, uh, and long rifles. And not until October 30th, 2014, did DOJ OIG make that public. So when Congress this, says, this well, nothing about, you have has, has led to anything, that's wrong. It's incorrect. This was written about in Narco News in 2010 and 2011, exactly what Matt just said. Bill Conroy, a good investigative reporter, reported about this in a series of articles through Narco News. Any listener out there can go run Bill sure, Conroy. Sure, I, I remember uh, Shelly Castile, uh, the former DA agent, retired. He said they tried to hire him out at, by the King Ranch to actually train drug cartels, uh, Sinaloa and others, as part of a huge civil war coming in Mexico. That was before all the killings started. That's right. So the point being, this has been on record for a number of years. But our, and our agencies have refused, including CIA, and I'll say it right straight into your camera, including the CIA and their CIA COG division, or whatever you want to call it, and their SAP, Special Access Programs, which I'm not supposed to talk about, and all the fusion centers that we are not supposed to know about. They all have this information and refuse to act upon it. Next week, according to our sources, which have been validated in more than one multiple sources, or will be moving more guns international across the Mexican border. 
we will be photographing and we're typing our hand and we're telling we're talking to someone else or here on this camera not we're not just talking to we're talking we're sending a message to someone else we're tired of your bs we're coming after you simple as that we will photograph your weapons Amen. We will document, or since the Congress and the Senate does not want to do this, since the FBI, for whatever reasons they've got, don't want to get involved in this because of the White House and their administration does not want us to continue. Absolutely. To when they get out of control, they force people to do desperate things. Going through, if they don't want to continue, then we will continue it for them. And we will give the information to them. And we will document it. I've been on this thing for 10 years, Alex. 10 years. You've been on it with me for at least four. Now, it's been vetted more than once. We have been so desensitized on this international gun running that they are now, I think, that they can get by and cram it right down our throat, and we're not going to do a damn thing about it. I personally, number one, am putting it with my career, my life at 78 years old, and saying one simple thing. We're coming after you. You're not going to steal my country anymore. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a realist. And I want my country back. Absolutely. Well, Amazing words. Uh, and, and, and let's put the House Oversight Committee phone number up. You don't get an email there. You just put it in the box, and then you send them your email, uh, oversight.house.gov. You can go there and click on the contact. There's a phone number also on the site. and we can, we can show that. And it's 202-225-0037, 202-225-0037. Uh, but, folks, this is real here. You can also click right there and then email them. It says, blow the whistle. They want you to blow the whistle. Yeah, right. Let's start a WhiteHouse.gov petition to stop the White House from shipping more guns to ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Uh, we'll do that today. Gentlemen, I'm going to come back and do five more minutes with you, then I'm going to get to the other news. But just your courage is amazing. This isn't about having courage, folks, but there's got to be some bottom to this, is what Tosh and Colonel Smithmaker are saying. Where does it come next where the people on the bases are blowing the whistle? It's all going on. It's all illegal. It's going to the Middle East, Al-Qaeda, and ISIS. It's totally insane. Congress has been told no one will do anything. I mean, this is crazy. I'm Alex Jones. This is the Info War. Stay with us. They're now getting a lot of these weapons into Europe, killing people there. Western governments have brought 5 million, quote, refugees in, most of them military-aged men to Europe. We don't know the numbers here. They'll claim, oh, a few hundred in Texas, and then it's a few hundred per high school, and then per middle school. I mean, my alma mater had 232 Syrian and Iraqi refugees last year. It was in the newspaper. The school's collapsing because of it. We called all the other schools. They had them, too, by the hundreds. Then they said, oh, Texas has gotten 400 refugees last year. It's thousands and thousands in Austin. They admit the, the, the C-130s land at night. Nobody's checked. They're just let in. They admitted the Associated Press. Minnesota's got 22% of these uh, immigrants have tuberculosis. Now they've got this flesh-eating bacteria. That's in the news. What is our uh, controlling elite thinking? Why are they so wed to jihad? Are they planning to let them have a big Tet Offensive here and use that Tet Offensive to take our rights? Here's the latest article up on Infowars.com. It's red-linked. Facebook, Twitter banning free speech to form virtual super state. Kit Daniels just wrote an article about the Bloomberg AP articles that whitewashed it all, put out an article basically breaking down the reality as they announced that we're all working with governments to shut down the anti-government speech. Talk about Benghazi, they, they restrict you, they ban you. Well, the answer is speak out more, get involved more, take action more. Now, we have just in a few minutes left here, and I appreciate Colonel Matt Smith, Mac, recently retired from the Marine Corps, and Robert Tosh Plumley, famous whistleblower, who for a decade's been exposing this, but the last few years got out, retired, uh, from what he was doing as contracting for the CIA and others, and has exposed it. And this is big stuff you're hearing. And, and, and I don't go, ooh, I'm breaking a big story. That's good for my show. I sit here with a rock in the pit of my stomach and go, I've got to really cover some stuff here that 99% of people are too scared to do because I know where it leads. I'm scared of where it leads if this continues. So the word has got to get out. It's getting more and more dangerous. Let me ask Colonel smith Mac and Plumley. Clearly, this is a tad offensive, too, with jihadis. Clearly, they know with these numbers, we're going to have San Bernardino's at some point when they all start activating on a weekly basis, maybe every day. And they've clearly said in Europe, we're banning your free speech because if you criticize Islam, they attack us. So the formula is bring them in, let them attack us. When they attack, take our rights. 
just like give them stinger missiles, let them blow up airplanes. How does the political elite suspend logic at a level like this to be the cause of all of our crises, the cause of our problems, and then use the problems to kill what's left of the Western world? I mean, it's so transparent. How are they getting away with this, or do you disagree with that analysis, Colonel? No, sir, I, I agree with your analysis, and I think they're just betting betting on the uh, the hope of, and that the American people have apathy. And I, I just plead with our fellow American citizens, um, don't let this happen. I mean, imagine you're, you're Josephine Terry, the mother of Brian Terry, who's been lied to by our government, who Congress has uh, said they would help, and, and they, they haven't. There's a lot of bloviating, and haven't, haven't been in the government. Uh, I understand, you know, the, the kind of the, you know, no, no, no offense intended, I'm part Polish, but the Polish salute where, you know, nobody knows what's going on and nobody takes responsibility. That's part of the, I think, the uh, modus operandi here. And uh, until we as citizens say enough, like Tosh and I have said and others, you know, enough, we're, we are going to expose this come hell or high water because this is, we, this is our country, dang it. This is not going to happen. This is the anymore. line on the sand. You've got folks in government and out. This is the line on the sand. Yes, sir. I say, if we don't stop here, if we don't stop this, and 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 put our spine up and and be and my God, we're Americans, not Americans. Uh, we 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 got to. I'm, I'm willing to put my life, my blood, my money, my everything on the line. I know Tasha's too. You as well, sir. And you got the the Terry family. For God's sakes, like the like the families of the the Benghazi thing. They just want some damn answers. Well, it just shows how ruthless they are. Yeah. Thirteen hour stand down, eight hours of combat. Let everybody die, then lie about it. I mean, it's just. And, and Hillary lying about being in combat, being shot at like Brian Williams. And then there's a shock 75% poll out. I'll still say that they want her to keep running even if she's indicted. I mean, Tosh, I get you. It's lying in the sand. And, and if we know about this, Tosh, I wonder what else is going on. The good yeah. news is, and I know you talk to him too, a lot of current military people, officers, special forces, you name it, they've never been more awake and more upset. So the establishment better understand they're not invincible, Tosh. All right, let me go back to the question you asked. Very simple as this. You asked why they let it go on. It's very simple. Would you take $265 million if you had your own private foundation set up if it required you to let this stuff go on? Simple question, yes no, or no? No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Well, some people in Congress and the Senate and the, and the POTUS and the White House would, and they have, and they've demonstrated So that they, they sold us out. We, we've been sold they out. Demonstrated that they have. Now, let me back up here, and I don't want to hog the whole airways. The, one of the things that we have not covered here is that the investigation that I was investigating with, with, with Bill Conroy of Narco News, as far back as 2009 and 2010, Brian Terry, Border Patrol agent Brian Terry was working. I didn't know it at the time, but Brian Terry was working on the very same thing that we're talking about here. He was told to stand, not stand down, he was told to halt. That was the word used, halt, H-A-U-L-T, halt. Halt his investigation uh, for uh, safety's sake, uh, political reasons. Anyway, he ended up getting killed in Peck Canyon. Questionable death on that matter, which we're currently investigating. Uh, we've been told to halt, halt our investigation. It's not healthy to go there. Well, I'm going there. I've already been there, and I'm going to stay there, and so is Matt. And so anyway, we're using your airways, uh, Alex, and we appreciate that. No one else will touch this information. I would just been out there for 10 years. It goes way back. I'm not going to ramble on and on like that. But those two things I wanted to bring up. Brian Terry is dead. And he was investigating the very same thing that we're investigating right now. I understand. Well, well listen, God bless you. Everybody needs to get involved. And you take this video. We do an article tomorrow and just keep hammering. So when they shoot down airplanes with the Stinger missiles... Uh, or go into a school with the machine guns and kill 300 people. The Second Amendment in America doesn't get blamed. The veterans don't get blamed. The gun owners don't get blamed. The criminals that have gone too far and hijacked this nation get blamed. We'll get another update from you soon, gentlemen. But the answer for all our safety, stay in the sunshine and keep getting this word out. And thank you both, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you, Alex. Thank you, Colonel. Sir. There they go. Uh, I tell you... <laughs> Lajeunesse, I've been on his show on Fox before. He's a good guy, but they're probably not letting him run with this. That's why you haven't seen it on TV. They ran with Tasha's info here four years ago, and McCain came out and said, oh, and pigs fly, and the you know sun comes up on the wrong side of the world. And, of course, it all came out. It was true. Plumlee's not lying. And people said, well, how did he stay in the government even after he, he exposed a whole bunch of corruption? 
Well, that's because he got to keep his job because he did the right thing. Our government was not as corrupt then. I mean, it's getting really, really corrupt, folks. And our government takes money from Qatar and, and Saudi Arabia. Hillary's got over $100 million from the Gulf states and her foundation alone. And then they just, hey, you got three warehouses full of weapons. Well, the ambassador's saying he won't give them the weapons. Kill, kill, kill him. They pulled all the security out of the surrounding areas, told everybody to get out of there. He got word. They, were, they got set up. Boom. In comes the jihadis to kill him. And then 10 guys down the road refuse to stand down and go down there and extend the firefight for eight and a half hours. So the military got to sit there and watch on overhead HD video in infrared and FLIR, everybody getting killed. And then they said, what about Turkey being involved to her? She goes, Turkey? Why are we talking about turkeys? Knowing the audience might be so dumb, they didn't know there was a country called Turkey or, they, or that she was asking, why are you asking me about turkeys? You're like, when you see Secretary of State, Miss Secretary of State, Clinton, why was the Turkish ambassador there? Turkey? Turkey? What about turkeys? That's what we're reduced to, some crime boss with a big Joker smile. So it's like a demon out of a movie, out of a comic book, uh, like, like the Joker. She's like a female version. <laughs> what difference does it make? Yeah. I mean, just, wow, there's nothing they can't do. And just most people just cower in fear, just constantly, like that's all we're supposed to do. I just don't get it. I, I just don't understand how we've turned into such a nation of cowards. I mean, what else are they up to? I've got articles here about the UN running child sex slavery. I see these articles every week for 20 years. UN investigations, you know, they get exposed by the, by the Pentagon and stuff, show the UN just murdering people in mass, killing little kids, selling them into sex slavery. And then I've got to watch every time I see a supermodel, she's wearing a, you know, UN shirt. Just all just, it's just dumb people allow this. Dumb, 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 dumb people. And America gets demonized and its history gets demonized because compared to other nations, we, had, we were so free, so open, so trailblazing and attempting to be even freer. That's why all the wealth and inventions and everything came from here. And now I see the instincts of slaves, just, to, oh, who cares? Oh, whatever. Oh, I'm trendy. That's what matters. Oh, you don't like Hillary? You hate women. And you're just like, they're like talking Martian. They're so addled and soft and stupid. And television and entertainment has done it. And smartphones are dumbing everybody down. We are falling apart. The good news is there's a hardcore core of people around the world that are awake and know what's going on. And all corruption ends up coming down because these people stab each other in the back as well. I want to play a few clips here and hit some other news. That I want to get this clip Mark Dice did over uh, for uh, Memorial Day. And this is what he actually got out in San Diego where no one basically knew what, what it was. We're gonna play it because this is why we're in so much trouble. But these same dumb people get told, feel good, hate Donald Trump, call him racist, say you want to kill him. Dumb people. I don't care what color they are. They all are the same group, the same race of idiots, of jellyfish, of fools. It doesn't mean I trust Trump or think he's perfect or any of that either. I just know when the establishment hates somebody for a good reason, I research it and find out why. Because they got Trump's phones tapped. They know his whole background. And they don't like what's going on there. Now, before I go any further here, we are running specials that end today. It also supports the broadcast, free shipping on $50 or more, 10% off each sign up for auto ship. Those specials right there are, are perpetual. But the new specials we're running is 20% off the Good Halogen Survival Shield Nation 99X2. That does end today, and then it's over. We very rarely offer specials like that. I did a Memorial Day special that ends today as well. 30% off vitamin mineral fusion. So good to absorb the key amino acids and minerals and vitamins you need in a great tasting fruit punch. It's all natural. We also have 30% off super male vitality. I should say organic. Uh, and that's just all sold out most of the time. The crew asked, why are you discounting something that's always sold out? And I said, but I want people that haven't tried it to be introduced to it. Just experience the libido, the stamina, the energy that I've experienced. Find out why it's got almost five-star reviews by third-party sites. 
30% off on that baby. Liber Shield, 30% off. Survival Shield X2, 20% off. All InfoWars apparel. That's Molon Labe, Hillary for Prison shirts, you name it. 20% off. And we need the funds, too, to go to Bilderberg, cover the RNC, DNC. We're going to have bigs all week out in California going up the coast at uh, Social Justice Warrior event meetings to show the true evil, the true cult, the true brainwashing. Now's the time to get stocked up and prepared, folks. The bad halogens are all over the environment. The fluoride, the chlorine, the bromide. This is the good halogen, true, pure iodine, nothing else like it. InfoWarsLife.com. Take advantage today. InfoWarsStore.com is the general umbrella site. 10% off on all water filtration systems. The promo code WATER at checkout. Okay, uh, I've got a bunch of other clips I want to play too. But first, this is why we're in so much trouble. Americans have no idea what Memorial Day is. San Diegans think military holiday is about LGBT issues. See, people ask, what's all the LGBT about? It's not about LGBT. It's about much ado about nothing. I'm not saying those people aren't something, but it's not making that the cost celeb. That's how you're somebody is you join this. You don't get a good free market. You don't get a, free, a great vacations or security or life or freedom of choice. You get just this constant new rights of bathrooms for whoever and fire hydrants for guys that think they're dogs and free bleach for people that want to burn their eyes out. I mean, I'm not kidding. Taxpayer paid for it. And so all people know is LGBT. They know what that is. They don't know what the three branches of government are. They don't know about radiation spiking. They don't know about what, uh, glyphosate's giving them all forms of cancer. They don't know why mama just got breast cancer at 40. But you know what they do now? They can feel sad for her and go see her while she chemos out and dies. Because they're just kind of, yeah, babies. Societal collapse, IQs plunging, sperm counts plunging. We're poisoned. We've been hit. We've been soft killed. But if you're aware of it, as a human, you're able to become aware of it and begin to change your life and override it. And when you're conscious of something, you can realize it's there. But we are sick people. Remember, Drudge came out and said we're a very sick society. The media said Drudge hates America. He said we're a sick society. No, we are a sick society. He doesn't say, oh, good, I'm a globalist. You know, let's prey on the dumb, sick people that are under our control. He says, come on, wake up. You're under control. You're being murdered. You're being slaughtered. You're being dumbed down. You're losing your humanity. And the sick little puppets in the media make jokes about it. All they have is their cynical hatred of their fellow humans. They don't have any property or any honor or any family. They've just got sniveling ignorance. In fact, I'm going to play this clip. But this weekend, I was out with some family. And I've got to tell this story. I haven't asked permission, but she won't care. I just tell stories anyways. I'm sorry I'm doing it. My sister Marley, she's got her boyfriend out there right on a boat. My kids, he's a real nice guy. I just met him the first time. Uh, and I know she went to like high school with him. And was, he's a really cool guy, but one of the women on the boat had so much sunscreen on, I said, hey, you look like a geisha girl. Oh, man, you got a lot of sunscreen on. And he goes, he's a white guy. He goes, oh, I'm sorry to Marley. Oh, are you okay? She goes, no, no, it's, it's funny. So Buckley sees that and starts making Kim Jong un jokes. I mean, we adopted Marley. We love her. We're not racist. We adopted an Asian person because, you know, she was six months old, you know, in an orphanage in South Korea. We love humanity. She's funny. She gets it. But see, and then later, then, oh my God, he got more upset about that. So Buckley kept doing it. And the guy was really nice, but he was really upset. Like, oh my gosh, it's okay if somebody looks like a geisha girl. They got so much wrong. That's what they look like a geisha girl. You know, white clown makeup. I see Japanese people on the hike and bike trail. They're wearing full mask because they want to be high class and not have suntan. She looked like a geisha girl. It's not bad to say, hey, you look like something culturally. See, like, hey, let's go eat Mexican food. I know people that freak out when they hear that. Don't say Mexican. Don't say, I mean, it's mental illness. I had somebody three weeks ago, somebody goes, hey, let's go get Mexican food. And someone in the group went, whoa, whoa, don't, and then there was a Mexican lady there, and she goes, I'm Mexican. It's Mexican food. You're supposed to say Mexican. It's middle, it's, it's crazy, folks. It is crazy. Crazy, crazy. They know, just, oh, 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 you, you said geisha girl, and there's an Asian person here. Yes, it wasn't meant to insult Asians, but see, they have to ban geisha girls at Halloween because that's making fun of Japanese. No, it's not. Is he tries to put the few best people up front, and, and, and folks say, 
oh, he's just trying to make people look dumb to feel powerful. No, this is scary. It's, it's like if we had a gauge that was flashing from green that we're smart to red that we're totally retarded, the gauge is going over in the red going, danger, 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 idiocracy is here. Warning, 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 warning. And of course, these people watch TV and Donald Trump's racist. There's no death panels. One week after they passed Obamacare, the cover of Newsweek was the case for killing granny with an image of a cord pulled out of the wall of a respirator. And they went on TV and went, we are going to kill you. <laughs> Dumb heifers. Remember, remember the, the guy that helped write it for Obama said, we're really lucky that these are the, the public so uninformed and dumb. I mean, I, I'm really insulted by that, you know? I mean, I'll be honest. I, I'm not, you know, I've seen somebody choking. I go over and I do the Heimlich while 50 other people stand there letting them die. And they thought I was weird to do it and tried to stop me. And I've seen people trying to rob somebody before in a parking lot, and I got it. I defended the person and helped them, and the people didn't even hardly say thank you afterwards. I, it's just like rats are everywhere. I, I don't even understand these people. I'm not an elitist, man, but I'm telling you, these people are dangerous. They're dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. And they are the enablers of everything we face and the problems we have. Paul Watson's coming up in the fourth hour. I'm going to do five more minutes. Infowars.com forward slash show. Spread that feed to everybody. Huge internet censorship has been announced. It's so huge. I did a bad job even covering the magnitude. I'm going to come back. It's out of control. Ah! Red level emergency. Mayday. By the way, if I wanted to just do really good radio, the stuff on DrudgeReport.com is just the most wild selection of stuff every day. I should just do the show off that. It's what most talk show hosts do. I do a lot of it off that. I've got stacks of news also important from Infowars.com. But he didn't beat his chest. Animal expert says gorilla, new boy who fell into his enclosure, was defenseless and would never have attacked him. Yeah, not, not one of those uh, African great gorillas. I mean, those things are pretty sweet to things that they don't see as a threat. And the argument is if they shot him with a tranquilizer, he could have flipped out and hurt the kid on accident. But uh, that's just, from what I know, reading about gorillas and watching shows about them, uh, that's just not the case. Now, baboons or something? Maybe even some chimpanzees would flip out and hurt the kid, but not, not, not a gorilla. That's the thing about Hollywood. People think of gorillas because of stupid movies, you know, where the gorillas kill everybody and stuff. That's just a bunch, of, that's just a load of bull, folks. Gorillas don't do that unless you attack them. And they're pretty smart. They know humans have guns. They run. But um, the Cincinnati Zoo, I, I didn't mean to come back and cover that. I was just reading about it. An animal behavior expert believes uh, that the gorilla who was shot dead when a four-year-old boy fell into the zoo enclosure was investigating, not attacking the child, which is understood was defenseless. Well, yeah, they like little kids, kittens, you name it. They, they all have, like, even the males have, like, a maternal instinct. The 180... Kilogram uh, critically endangered western lowland gorilla was killed by officials at Cincinnati Zoo in the U.S. just one day after his 17th birthday after the boy climbed through the barriers and fell 4.5 meters into the enclosure. You know, everywhere I go, I'll see like if there's a crack on the street that big now on private property, you'll say danger crack because somebody can sue you. And everywhere's gotten rid of diving boards, but now all the new pools, like the W, I won't stay at a W. It's all trendy, all crap. I've stayed at them in Europe, you name it. And it's like a one-foot pool now. It's like the trendier and trendier is like having no services. And now you watch, they're going to start even not letting humans get near animals because people don't watch their kids and they climb in. That's the nanny state. I have people that own restaurants where they have a regular deck with a five-foot drop. And they're having to like put sheet metal up because kids will fall through and then the parents sue them. There's no common sense. It's all just a bunch of idiots everywhere. And there's video of him shooting the gorilla and he's being nice to the little kid. Footage taken from a visitor shows the gorilla grabbing the boy by the shirt. Many are placing the blame squarely on the parents of the four-year-old boy who investigators believe crawled through the railing barrier. And there's really sad video uh, of the whole of the whole thing, but I'm going to do a special report on this in the whole nanny state because, you know, that's what's, that's what's causing all this. And I can get why they shot the gorilla because, you know, he's obviously agitated. He's got the kid. He doesn't know what to do. It's very exciting when you're locked up in a jail 
and then, uh, you know, there's suddenly a little animal in there with you, and you don't know what to do with it. The gorilla's not stupid. He's looking for its parent. He's expecting that somebody's going to come crawling in wanting this baby. And so he's just checking the kid out, not knowing what to do. And, well, he gets, he gets shot. So that footage is up on InfoWars.com as well. But I'm going to shoot a quick special report for the nightly news on that because, you know, I get why they shot him. Because if, 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 if they would have not done it and there's a small chance the gorilla could actually hurt the kid, uh, it'd be all over. Because the way the gorilla's running away from yelling crowds. If you watch the video and the audio, they, here's, here's the yelling and here's the, so trying to get the kid and run to wherever it's safe. And one time I had some neighbors, I had this chihuahua named Conan as a joke. It was a tiny black chihuahua, dark brown chihuahua. And this neighbor woman, the dog didn't like other people, you know, it was a, a one-person dog or whatever, or two-person dog. And she, the lady kept following the dog, trying to quote, give it back to us, the neighbor, and ran it out in the street down to William Cannon when I lived down there. And they just smashed the dog flatter in a pancake. And then another neighbor saw it, called me. I came home from work, and they had the dog in a trash bag. But it's kind of that example of the nanny state. Oh, the doggy's out. Let me chase it down the road till I run it out into the highway to get run over flatter in a pancake. Anyways, just remember that story. We're going to be back with Paul Joseph Watson and more InfoWars Nightly News tonight, 7 o'clock Central. Don't forget the huge special ends today. 30% off on a lot of our best-selling items. You can get free shipping and 10% uh, off with auto ship on top of that. Those are some huge discounts, and it makes the broadcast possible. InfoWarsLife.com. We are back. It's the Alex Jones Show Live 4th Hour Overdrive with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson. And we're going to get the European perspective. Of course, we've got the big Brexit vote coming up here in the United Kingdom. In a few weeks' time, the official campaign for the vote leave movement is not including immigration as one of its major platform issues in campaigning for Britain to leave the European Union, which is a massive mistake because the polls all show that this is the primary concern amongst the British voters, and for very good reason. Because we've seen again and again this cultural enrichment that has infused our wonderful country via the uh, gravy train of Muslim migrants over the past year is not proving to beneficial. This is a top story up on Infowars.com right now. Swedish government kicks local family out of home, gives it to Muslim migrants. That's right, Sweden in which politicians encourage their citizens to give up their garages to house asylum seekers. Now they're just taking people who are born in Sweden. These are locals who were born in the town, grown up there, lived there their entire lives and saying, get the hell out. You're being replaced by the precious Muslim migrant. You must bow down and worship them, otherwise you're racist. A local family in the Swedish city of Lingo has been ordered by the government to leave their home so that it may be given to migrants arriving from a foreign country. Father of two teenage boys, Uffe Rustan, received a voicemail from his local municipality telling him he would need to vacate the property by August in order to make way for asylum seekers from the Middle East. He's being culturally enriched. This is a quote. Listen to this. This is a guy who's got two teenage sons born in the city grew up there, lived there their entire lives. They're paying the government rent. This is not a free welfare house. They're taxpayers. The father works. He's paying the government rent. He's got a contract. The government left him a voicemail and said that that contract would not be renewed. He would be kicked out and replaced by Muslim migrants who presumably, almost 100% 100, 100 guaranteed, aren't going to be paying a penny, even though Sweden is suffering from a drastic housing shortage right now. They're kicking their own citizens out of their home to make way for these economic migrants. This is a quote from, from the father. I was evicted from my home over the phone. When I asked for the reason, he said that people come from other countries. He left the news and basically just said, have a nice weekend. He goes on, it feels like I'm worthless. Even though I pay taxes and my kids go to school here, you cannot put a family on the streets for another family. Well, you can if they're from the Middle East, if they're precious asylum seekers who have been such a, 
a great benefit to the culture of Sweden that since that country opened its doors to mass immigration, the rape level skyrocketed 1,400% because it's such a great form of cultural enrichment. This is a government that has Islamists beheading people in IKEA stores, and what does it do the very next day? doesn't take measures to combat Islamists, to combat the radicalization of Muslims in these Swedish no-go ghettos where police, firefighters, ambulance personnel are pelted with stones chased out of the area. It doesn't do any of that. What does it do instead? It lectures Swedes about Islamophobia. <laughs> it organizes anti-Islamophobia marches in the very days after Islamists have beheaded Swedes in Ikea because it's their fault. And it's this family's fault, presumably, for trying to actually pay the government, pay taxes, agree a contract to stay in this home, not good enough. You will be supplanted. You will be replaced. And again, Sweden is not the only European government that is turfing out its own citizens of social housing which in many cases they actually pay the government, it's not free, to accommodate the influx of Muslim migrants. We've featured the reports out of Germany, where these migrants are being given four-star hotels, while low-income Germans are being ordered to leave their homes. The Telegraph reported that Germans are now beginning to receive notices of eviction to make way for asylum seekers. Again, placing the welfare, the legitimacy, the importance of these economic migrants, the majority of whom don't come from Syria, they're not refugees, they head straight for the northern European welfare havens, they're not even migrants. They're not refugees, but they're being treated like gods, because that's the new humanitarian trendy thing to do. And of course, once they've imported them, once they've had their numerous children, which they're prone to do, like Erdogan out of Turkey says, you know, decrying contraception, urging Muslims to have more and more children while Europe dies, basically, fertility dropping through the floor. All those people that those governments are bringing, bringing into these northern European welfare states, eventually they're going to get the right to vote. They're dependent on government. They're going to vote for more big government. That's why you've got Green Party politicians in Germany heralding their arrival, heralding the fact that Germans will be a minority in their own cities by the year 2030, saying it's a good thing, decrying the so-called right-wingers who dare stand up for their own populations. But those Muslim migrants are just going to vote for more big government, and that's the main incentive for big government to import them in the first place. Also, big business gets access to cheap labour. So again, crony corporatism wins out at the end of the day. And again, if you look at Germany, for example, in Berlin alone, they're spending 600 million euros a year to house migrants. In some cases, in upmarket Berlin hotels, we're talking 18,000 euros per refugee per year. Now, that is enough to basically fix Berlin's homeless population, Berlin's homeless problem. They have a homeless population of 10,000 people, and yet the government is going to be paying in Berlin alone for 10,000 people to stay in four-star hotels so they could fix their homeless population overnight. But no, you're a German citizen living in Germany. You're scum. You're a Swede. You're a, you're a single father with two children, two teenage children trying to raise them, working hard, paying taxes, paying the government to rent a house, having a contract. You're scum. You will be replaced by the precious Muslim migrants who are proving to be such a great benefit to our society, as is seen again in Germany. You remember at the time we reported on it, Cologne... Of course, the mainstream media didn't report on it for three days because, along with the police, they tried to cover it up. But it emerged on social media, the mass molestation of women in Cologne in numerous other European 
and German cities on the evening of New Year's Eve. And we've played the footage. We featured the eyewitness reports from the bouncers who the women fled to for protection on that evening. They described it as a civil war. The police described it as a civil war style situation. Firecrackers, fireworks going off everywhere, being thrown at crowds, women being groped, molested, their clothes torn off. Well, surprise, surprise, it's happened once again. This is out of the Daily Mail. 26 women, and it could be up to 30 plus, according to this report, are sexually assaulted at German concert with victims surrounded by mobs of migrant men and groped in copycat attacks like those in Cologne. A group of asylum seekers sexually assaulted numerous women at a free concert in Germany at the weekend in attacks similar to those carried out in Cologne on New Year's Eve. Three Pakistani men, and again you saw in Cologne that the vast majority of them who were Moroccan were not arrested. Three Pakistani men are already under arrest for 26 women filed complaints that they had been improperly touched, fondled and groped during the festival in the city of Darmstadt. Police have said the number of complainants could rise. Between two and three more men are still being sought by police as victims receive counselling when authorities try to cool down rising tensions against migrants in general. Because, of course, that, again, is the main problem. It's the Islamophobia that's causing all these women to be groped, obviously. Like the mayor of Cologne, who came out a few days afterwards and said, basically, defend yourself against the rapists by keeping them at arm's length virtually blaming the women for what happened to them and ludicrously suggesting that that could be a solution to the problem, which is sweeping Europe, which the primary victims of this are children, Muslim migrant children in migrant camps. Do we care about them? We obviously don't care about the German people, the Swedish women. They had a report out of Norway last week which blamed the large-scale spike in sexual assaults on Nordic drinking culture. Because Nordic drinking culture is a completely new phenomenon. We've never had that before, have we? No. They refuse to even identify the fact that <laughs> most of the problem is arising out of bringing in people who treat women as second-class citizens who think that they're liable to be groped, to be sexually assaulted because they're not wearing a frigging hijab because they're not covered up. So now again, another case of this in Germany. How many more cases of this before feminists and so-called women's rights activists actually stand up and identify the real aggressive patriarchal culture that is causing this? We'll be back with more news on the fourth hour overdrive of The Alex Jones Show. Don't go away. We are back. It's the fourth hour overdrive of the Alex Jones Show with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson. Now, the narrative, which we saw back a couple of months ago, put out by the mainstream media and never retracted, even in the face of overwhelming evidence to the contrary, that Donald Trump was to blame for the violence being staged at his rallies, almost exclusively being staged by Bernie Sanders supporters. That narrative is now finally being overturned in light of these videos which we put out almost every single day, multiple times, over and over again. Irate, unhinged, crazy, demented leftists spitting at people, punching people, punching police horses, harassing anyone who dares disagree with their views. And of course those videos were made possible by being able to fund and send our reporters out to those locations and catch that social justice warrior meltdown on tape. And of course, that is all funded by your support by getting the products at InfoWarsStore.com. We've extended the Memorial Day special another day. Again, outstanding discounts at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, you can get 30% off Super Male Vitality. 30% off Liver Shield, 30% off Mineral Fusion, 20% off Survival Shield X2, and 20% off all InfoWars apparel. So, Hillary for prison t-shirts, everything 20% off. Again, that special has been extended, 
And not only do you get great products, you can go and read the independent reviews, very highly rated indeed. We don't make those reviews ourselves. They're from people who have actually got the products, have gone on the website and taken the trouble to say how well they're working for them, how great they are. And of course, it helps support our broadcast. It helps support our expansion and our ability to actually act like a news organization which takes a hell of a lot of money and it takes a constant overturn a constant supply of money to be able to do that we've been able to send our reporters out to these locations again over the last few months to document the violent leftists and their war on free speech which as i will talk about in the next segment really means that we're now winning we've actually turned the corner in terms of beating the social justice warriors were winning the war for free speech, which is why Twitter, Facebook, and now the unelected dictatorial EU is coming down hard once again with the censorship. We'll get back into that in the next segment. But again, go to InfoWarsStore.com to take advantage of those great, spread, those great specials. Again, 30% off uh, some of the uh, nutritional products and 20% off all Info, InfoWars clothing the Hillary for Prison t-shirt, all at InfoWarsStore.com. Now, the College Fix reports, despite drop in donations and enrollment, Mizu finds over $1 million for diversity audit. Despite plunging donations and enrollment figures, the University of Missouri has begun an independent audit of its diversity and inclusion policies. The cost, $1.1 million. And again, this gets to the point which I'm going to make and I'm going to get more into depth after the break, which is this. We're winning. Okay, we had this huge social justice warrior tantrum last year, the freaking out over the Halloween costumes, the cultural appropriation. Again, the University of Missouri, all these ridiculous lists of demands from permanently triggered safe spaces who are basically trying to completely overturn every existing system, every social more, every political construct, whether it's good or bad, because they're flagrant communists. You can read the Communist Manifesto. In fact, Kurt Nimmo quoted from it in an article today, one of the very final passages where it says that's their plan, is to overturn absolutely everything and remould society in their own image. And given that their image is punching and spitting people, spitting at people in the face who disagree with them because they have no argument, that's probably not a, an image which we want society to reflect. So you saw at the University of Missouri the consequences of that tantrum. Their new freshman class is down 1,400 students smaller than last year. They've got a 24% drop in donations to the football team that went on strike. They've got a $6 million decline in donations for the month of December. They're losing. No one wants to go there because smart, successful people don't want to be educated at an insane asylum, which is what a lot of these universities are now being turned into with the inmates running the asylum. We'll be back with this and more news after the break. This is The Alex Jones Show Live. We are back on the fourth hour overdrive of the Alex Jones Show with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson. So the University of Missouri's response to the fact that it's been hemorrhaging money from every orifice since last year's social justice warrior meltdown tantrum is to waste another $1 million on a diversity audit. Again, a completely pointless exercise simply to satiate triggered, demented, left-wing idiots. Look at these numbers. Their new freshman class is 1,470 students smaller than last year. They've experienced a 24% drop in donations in the three months that followed the football player strike. They experienced a $6 million decline in donations for the month of December. So how have they responded? Well, they've doubled down on their idiocy. I mean, look, at, compare the reactions of these universities. I talked about the inmates running the asylum. DePaul University. We saw the footage last week. 
again, Milo Yiannopoulos tries to give a speech at an event, it's crashed by unhinged Black Lives Matter demonstrators who almost provoke violence. The university demanded that Breitbart pay the security cost. They paid the bill and the security did absolutely nothing because they were ordered to do nothing by the university. The police were told by the university not to get involved, even though if it was the other way around, if so-called evil right-wingers had crashed the safe space of these, of these whiny crybabies, it would have been complete bedlam. There would have been arrests. There would have been horrified newspaper headlines the next day. But DePaul University did nothing. Their president offered a mealy-mouthed apology, which meant absolutely nothing. And what's the result? Well, a 1.1 rating out of five on their official Facebook page. Again, the marketplace of free ideas has completely trashed their reputation, and rightly so. Who would want to go to an institution? A university, the whole frigging point of a university is to share ideas, is to have your own beliefs challenged. They stand diametrically opposed to that, and now they're gonna suffer in the free marketplace of ideas and rightly so. The University of Missouri is suffering in terms of funding. They're hemorrhaging money from left, right, and center. Because again, they've allowed the inmates to run the asylum. And smart, successful people don't want to be educated at an insane asylum. But then you can look at other examples, better examples. Rutgers University, again, you had a Milo event which was crashed by social justice warriors. The president came out afterwards, defended, quote, controversial ideas as fundamental to the intellectual life of a university. Basically stated the fact. Oberlin College rejected the egregious, absurd list of demands from their triggered safe space students, calling it deeply troubling. You saw Melissa Click. Again, back during that Missouri mass tantrum last year, calling for muscle to silence the First Amendment. She was fired by the university, and rightly so. And again, I'm getting messages every single day from college students who are on our side. So when we lambast these triggered safe spaces at these universities across America and the United Kingdom, let's just realize that a lot of those students are no longer going along with it. So we're winning. We're really starting to convince some of these universities to actually stand up for the very foundation, the very purpose of what a university is supposed to be. But over in the UK, we have this headline out of the Daily Mail. Students call for prisons to be banned. NUS group headed by union's anti-Semitic new president says all criminals should be freed. This is the new social justice warrior cause, freeing all violent criminals. This is no surprise given that the head of the NUS, a woman called Malia Buata, came out recently and basically said that she refused to denounce ISIS. She refused to condemn ISIS, saying that doing so would be an act of Islamophobia. How many times have I talked about the alliance between Islamists and leftists, that alliance is moving closer because a lot of these leftists are anti-Semites. They hate Jews. They're racist. So now an influential students group has called for prisons to be abolished because they are sexist and racist in the latest in a series of far left interventions by the student movement. The National Union of Students Black Students Conference also voted to step up its fight against the government's anti-extremism agenda. In other words, refusing to condemn ISIS. The controversial votes at the conference in Bradford came after Malia Boatia was elected president of the union, defeating the more moderate incumbent. She has previously argued that it's Islamophobic to oppose ISIS and described one university as a Zionist outpost because it has a large Jewish society. So now they're actually calling for prisons to be abolished. No one's debating that the prison industrial complex isn't a problem. 
that locking up people, you know, for possessing an ounce of marijuana isn't completely ridiculous. That's not the argument. They're actually arguing to release all the prisoners because disproportionately, many of them are black. Of course, that's nothing to do with the fact that black people commit disproportionately more crimes, but again, we can't talk about that because facts are racist. So we're having victories on, at some level, at universities in the US, but in the UK, again, a long way to go. Now, over in France, Paris tourism hit by attacks, protests, this is AFP, already suffering from the impact of last year's jihadist attacks. Tourism in Paris faces a fresh challenge from the recent wave of violent strikes and protests tourism bosses warned on Monday. Listen to these figures. Paris's tourism industry is basically collapsing at this point. Japanese visitors down 50%, 56% in the first quarter of the year, Russian visitors down 35%. Again, similar numbers with Chinese tourists. People don't want to visit Paris. And it's not just because, you know, hug a Muslim didn't work. They got attacked. Charlie Hebdo, they got attacked again last November. It's not just down to that. It's because the leftists now in Paris and other major cities in France are actually protesting <laughs> against these new labor reforms which the government is desperately trying to pass because they've got a 10% unemployment rate. Basically, these labor reforms say that governments have the right to hire and fire people if they're performing poorly as a company. I mean, God forbid they would want to do that, right? They also say they have the right to ask employees in France to work more than 35 hours a week. Again, God forbid that you would be asked to work more than 35 hours a week. And of course, this goes back to the stereotype, which I'm afraid is true in many cases. And you know, I love France. I visit France regularly. My parents live there. The culture's good, the food's great, but French people are really lazy. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the stereotype is true. They've got this huge leftist union movement, which is a hangover from basically communists from the 60s. And every single time they try to stimulate the economy by giving businesses more freedom to excel, to hire people who actually do the job, do a good job, and to not be beholden to employees like it's some kind of welfare, they riot in the streets. You know, their, their three-hour lunch breaks aren't long enough, apparently. And now they're also protesting against this law in France, which they've just passed. They made it a law that a company with over 50 employees in France, if it sends out a work email to an employee outside of work hours, then that's a crime. They actually passed that as a law in France. So if you, if you leave work as one of these, you know, bedwetting labor union members who has a tantrum if he's asked to work over 35 hours a week, if you leave work at five o'clock and you get a work email at 5.30, whether you read it or not, whether you respond to it or not, that is a crime by the company that sent out that email. Is it really any wonder that France's economy is in the toilet right now, that they've got a 10% unemployment rate, the combination of kowtowing to Islamists, to these ghettos, inviting more attacks, and then again kowtowing to these leftists who are now rioting in the streets, just like the Islamists are, attacking police and basically causing absolute bedlam. And it goes back to that stereotype, which I'm afraid is, in most cases, very true. French people are very lazy. It's a hangover from this communist labor union movement, and it's causing all kinds of problems for their, quote, economic recovery, which has never happened, because they're so deeply entrenched in the EU's anemic economic growth that they can't get out of it. And the government's desperately trying to pass these laws to reinvigorate the business market and they're basically rioting in the streets because of it.
because it, it's this communist labour movement hangover and they're stereotypically very lazy people. Sorry. Which brings me on to this article out the college fix. Social science professor defends stereotypes, says many are accurate. My God, could it be that logic and facts are actually true once again? A Rutgers University social science professor set out to research how stereotypes are inaccurate, so he went, he set out to prove that they're inaccurate and they're just down to racial and gender prejudices, so he could proclaim and promote that, that to the world with hard scientific data, but eventually made a startling discovery. Most stereotypes are accurate. Well, what do you know? Scholarly claims of stereotype inaccuracy are baseless, Dr. Lee Justin told the College Fix in an interview. He says, quote, when I first began my research, I had assumed all those social scientists declaring stereotypes to be inaccurate were right, so I wanted to know the basis for those claims. So he basically dug down into the basis for all these studies, all these claims that stereotypes about race, about gender, about whatever, are based on inaccurate prejudices. Turns out that's not true. Many researchers cite social psychologist Gordon Alport's classic book, The Nature of Prejudice, in support of the claim that stereotypes are inaccurate or at least exaggerations of real differences. But Alport relied on a few anecdotes, hardly scientific evidence, just him said. So this researcher basically found that these stereotypes about race and gender and politics as well were generally, not always, but generally found to be true. So once again, Expect this guy to be viciously attacked by social justice warriors for daring to point out the fact that whether due to biological differences, race differences, IQ differences, gender behavior differences, that all humans are not the same. And they tend to engage in stereotypical behavior. God forbid he's had an objective, reality-based perspective on that, and he's revealed himself as a hate criminal to the college fix. So expect him to be viciously attacked by social justice warriors over the coming days. Now, Alex talked about this in the show, of course. The EU is linked up with Twitter and tech firms to combat hate speech. Again, this is the EU Commission, which is an unelected body which acts as both the legislative and the executive of Europe. There's no separation of powers, and these people aren't elected in the first place. This is a dictatorship. So it's no surprise that they're now teaming up with Facebook and Twitter to censor, quote, hate speech. Hate speech about the amazing Muslim migrants who are bringing so much cultural enrichment to the continent of Europe. Now, of course, we know how they characterize some of that hate speech because we had this headline out of Breitbart from back in January. You tweet a lot, watch your tone. Cops threaten Dutchmen for opposing government mass migration plans. So a guy in the Netherlands who tweeted that he thought his government's refugee policy was a bad plan got a home visit from the police. That's the new definition of hate speech. And listen to this quote from... Vera Jourova, the EU commissioner responsible for justice, consumers and gender equality. Again, unelected, nobody even knows who she is, represents a dictatorial body, a Byzantine empire. Quote, the internet is a place for free speech, not hate speech. Okay, under the First Amendment, as the Supreme Court has defined it over and over again, hate speech is free speech. You have to defend unpopular speech for free speech to exist at all. But of course, the First Amendment definition of free speech, which the Supreme Court has upheld, has not been applied globally because it actually defends free speech. What they're actually applying in terms of this EU Commission Twitter plan to censor, quote, hate speech is the UN Declaration of Human Rights, which, of course, doesn't give us any human rights. Because under Article 20, brackets 2, of the UN Declaration of Human Rights, when it applies to free speech, 
It says, quote, that it does not require states to prohibit all negative statements towards, towards national groups, races, or religions, but as soon as a statement, quote, constitutes incitement to discrimination, hostility, or violence, it must be banned. So in other words, if you discriminate against, oh, I don't know, for example, a belief system that condones stoning women to death or throwing gays off buildings, then that's discrimination. And that is not allowed under this definition of hate speech, which has been created, which has been contrived by the United Nations and then adopted globally. They claim to be defending your free speech. They claim to afford you these great human rights. And when you actually drill down into the details, free speech which offends someone, which discriminates against their religious beliefs, is hate speech. It will not be allowed. It will be banned, which is exactly what they're, they've already introduced in Facebook and Twitter. You know, the option to report people because you disagree with their opinion or because they offended your religion. They've already had those options in place for over a year now, and they're simply codifying it with that EU enforcement arm to actually go after people who criticize this insane migrant policy. We'll be back in the final segment of The Alex Jones Show, Infowars.com. Stay tuned. We are back. It's the fourth hour, final segment of The Alex Jones Show live. Let's hit a final few news stories. Of course, we've got the big, massive controversy over Harambe the gorilla. Now, the debate is over whether they should have shot the, grill, the gorilla or not, but what was most interesting in the immediate aftermath of this news story, and in fact for hours afterwards, these social justice warriors who are obsessed, absolutely fixated with injecting identity politics into absolutely everything, they blamed this little black boy falling into a gorilla pit and being saved who did they blame it on? Well, white people, of course. <laughs> and I, in fact, put out a tweet yesterday where all these individuals, you know, Black Lives Matter activists, SJWs, rushed to blame the gorilla being shot on white privilege. And you can see all these tweets on my Twitter. They were like, the gorilla was only shot to save the white boy. If this boy had been black, they would have just left it to die. <laughs> that was the tone of the tweets, of course. The little boy in the gorilla pit was black. His parents were black. And yet immediately they sought to inject racial identity politics into a news story that had nothing whatsoever to do with race. So you can go and check out those tweets on my Twitter. Facebook using people's phones to listen in on what they're saying suggests Professor the company says that it does use people's microphones, but only to help them out. Of course, that relates to the ambient background noise, which they listen to, to target you with ads. We've been reporting on that since at least 2006. Now a top professor's talking about it. RT reports outrage as Dutch authorities give up to 10,000 euros to refugees to go shopping. Some Dutch residents are outraged after finding some... <laughs> All of them should be, after finding out that a few cities have been offering as much as 10,000 euros to refugees to buy furniture and other necessities. Again, people living on the dole on welfare in the Netherlands won't even earn 10,000 euros a year. These precious migrants are being handed it with a cheque as soon as they arrive. They're being kicked out of their own housing to accommodate these migrants. But the Dalai Lama has come out and actually defended Christian Europe, you know, done the job that the Islamist Pope is supposed to do, which he doesn't. Dalai Lama warns against taking too many migrants. Arab domination, migrants should return. This is out of Breitbart. The Dalai Lama has said there are too many migrants pouring into Europe, warning against the continent becoming Arabized and claiming the solution is the eventual repatriation of migrants. Striking a somewhat different tone to the Pope who, of course, a couple of weeks ago came out and said that ISIS was just like Jesus, just like Jesus' disciples spreading their message across the Middle East. Because I don't remember that Bible passage where Jesus' disciples beheaded people, took women as sex slaves, and forced people to pay a tax on pain of death if they didn't convert. 
must have missed that Bible verse there. So the Pope is, you know, open arms. He's busy giving awards to his fellow massive hypocrite, George Clooney, who has like five mansions, but says that Germany, German villages of 70 people should accept 700 migrants, while he doesn't accept a single one into any of his five mansions with their eight, nine, ten empty bedrooms. He's meeting with the Pope while the Pope invites this mass invasion of Muslim migrants, and it takes the Dalai Lama to actually defend Christianity in Europe. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of The Alex Jones Show. Alex will be back tomorrow, 11 to 2. And be sure to check out InfoWars Nightly News, breaking news at InfoWars.com. Thanks for joining us.